Baltimore Orioles. Are you kidding me? On Nassim. The Orioles have the lead. And streaming live on the Nassim app. It all starts right now. Uh, the land by the lake here in Ohio. We are in Cleveland for game two of a four game series. And game one, 54 of 162 this season. That means, including tonight, the Orioles have just nine regular season games remaining. The magic number remains at seven to clinch the American League East, and they will hope to take one giant step toward the division tonight from Progressive Field, the home of the Cleveland Guardians. Good evening from Ohio. Kevin Brown, the Hall of Famer, Jim Palmer, with us momentarily. The Orioles come in off of a 5-2 loss yesterday. They have dropped two in a row. The Rays won yesterday in walk-off fashion so that magic number still at seven combination of seven Orioles wins plus Rays losses to clinch the American League East title the Orioles could use a long start from Dean Kramer today we've said some version of that for several games now because this Orioles bullpen down the stretch has been taxed the Orioles playing their 15th consecutive day with the game 15th out of 17 consecutive days without an off game and you can see the damage done to the bullpen six relievers used in the wins over Tampa Bay and Houston five in the middle game against the Astros the Orioles won that one as well nine more relievers the last two nights the O's get a relatively fresh arm today with Tyler Wells called up and Mike Bauman option so Jim, this Orioles bullpen has been so good all year. They've been asked to do a lot, particularly with the injury to Felix Bautista last month. But it is a taxing time right now without an off day on the schedule. Well, it really is. And, uh, you know, uh, Brandon Hyde certainly knows about it. I mean, that's why I think he was very pleased that Tyler Wells, I saw Tyler, who most people are calling Trevor now, <laughs> I, I said, if I was 6'8", I would have shown up a month ago and just walked through the front door and said, I'm here. And what are you going to do about it? So anyway, he's healthy. He feels good. So hopefully he'll be able to help this bullpen. I mean, he was one of the reasons that uh, the Orioles played so well, uh, you know, the first, what, two, three months of the season as a starter. But again, we all know after his rookie year, he can, you know, he could close, which he did that year, or he could act, pitch in any, you know, any situation they need. But at the end of the day, um, Brandon Hyde said, I'm going to lean on Dean Kramer. And, um, you know, the last couple of starts, maybe five innings or whatever, they'd love to have him get into the seventh inning and then kind of piece your way through uh, a very pesky um, lineup. Uh, you know, the, the Indians, they're not a great offensive club, but against the Orioles, they step up. They've won three out of the four games this year. The last one in Baltimore, 12 runs, 17 hits last night. They, you know, got the early lead, and then they kind of pecked away with walks and hit batter and so on, whatever. But I think the big thing is they they uh, they make you throw strikes. They fouled off 37 pitches from Grayson Rodriguez. So let's hope they swing through some pitches because we know Dean Kramer is the master of about four or five different uh, assortments. And Dean's had a terrific second half, and you said they are going to lean on Dean Kramer today. The last three starts have been a little bit shorter for him, but he was very effective last time out. Kramer got the start against the Rays on Sunday, the game the Orioles won to take a two-game lead in the division. Probably goes a little bit longer if it wasn't such a must-win game, but was very good when he was in. Yeah, you know, the dilemma for, you know, not only Chris Holt and uh, Darren Holmes, the pitching coaches, Brandon Hyde, is you have a lot of young pitchers, whether it's Kramer, whether it was Wells early, whether it was Bradish, that, okay, they've never pitched this many innings, so let's concise the pitch count. Now, as Brandon would say, and, and Dean does a pretty good job of this, about 15 pitches per innings. You know, again, I mean, if you throw if 16, 17, you have a little bit of trouble. You're going to get into the 90, 95. You're trying to protect the arm in case you're, you're either the division winner or the wild card. So, again, I mean, it's kind of a double double edged sword where you're trying to protect them, but you also need to win games, which is why when they struggle in the fifth, sixth innings, they're gone. And the bullpen comes in and it's really taken its toll. Let's talk about the battery mate for Dean Kramer and those relievers for a bit, because I think sometimes we take Adley Rutschman for granted. He's been here for two years. It feels like he's been here for a dozen years at this point. <laughs> this kind of offensive production is not normal for major league catchers. Maybe it's not the breakout home run year that some folks might have expected, but Adley Rutschman, the best catcher in baseball in terms of on-base percentage, hits, walks, RBIs, times on base, and 29 doubles. This road trip, we are really starting to see Adley Rutschman deliver extra base hit after extra base hit. Yeah, that's what he did last year with, what, 35 doubles? So, again, the ability, I mean, to hit the ball everywhere, even, you know, 
hits Gaddis in the leg and beats it out. Great speed. I mean, great on base percentage. Though he doubles down the line, and later on in the game, he'll drive one to left field. Here we go. And, you know, almost hit it out of here. High wall here. So, Kevin, I played on a lot of good clubs, and, you know, when the Orioles have struggled in this rebuild, what happens is you say to yourself, okay, the Orioles are going to get better when your players are better than the other team you're playing behind the plate they are uh, he's been that good and um, you know and I, I he, you've already seen adjustments last year he struggled against left-handed pitching he's hitting what 294 so he's really made a difference offensively and uh, you know it's a great combination if he doesn't catch and you've been able to rest him you got James McCann who's done a really good job so uh, again offensively Adry Hutchman's is good or better than any catcher in baseball, and that's why the Orioles are playing as well as they are. He'll be batting second today. Shane Bieber, the former Cy Young winner for Cleveland. Dean Kramer for the O's. Look at a snap, a losing streak. Received, hopefully, some good news before the game today. At least to our eyes, it looked positive. Felix Bautista threw a bullpen a couple of days ago in Houston. There is Bautista again with trainer Brian Ebel watching, along with Chris Holt, Dan Holmes, manager Brandon Hyde, among others. Said that Bautista felt good after the bullpen. Brandon Hyde still being very cautious, saying he's not expecting anything from Bautista necessarily this year, but he does continue to ramp up, and it appears to continue to ramp up in terms of effort, throwing a full complement of pitches out in the bullpen. You just never know. Maybe, just maybe, there is a bright future ahead in the next couple of weeks for Felix Bautista. Orioles, the sixth highest scoring team in the major leagues this year at 5.1 runs per game. And here's how they line up for game two in Cleveland. They line up behind Gunnar Henderson and they line up with Ryan O'Hearn in his six game hit streak in the cleanup spot. O'Hearn is having a very good year and he's had a lot of success historically against the man who will oppose him for Cleveland. That's the 2020 Cy Young winner Shane Bieber. Yeah he hasn't uh, pitched since what July 9th. He had some elbow problems. The Orioles faced him earlier in the year got and talked about how the uh, 
the the Guardians came into uh, Baltimore one two out of three. Uh, he pitched on a Sunday afternoon, gave up seven runs, which is exceptional. I mean, we're winning, talking about a Cy Young winner back in 2020, the short season. You go eight and one with a 163 ERA. He's a master of making really good pitches when he's healthy. So we'll see how long he can go. Take a look at our Statcast powered by Google Cloud. So again, a guy, a strike thrower. And you can see fastball cutter, slider, the lowest batting average. Got the knuckle curve ball, and again, he's a big. Big guy, 28 years old, and what about 6'3, six, 6'4? Six, Occasional change up, probably won't be throwing that with a batting average of 455. Bieber, very good historically against the Orioles, hit very hard against the Orioles in that start earlier in the season. And he will face Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, and Anthony Santander here in the first. On a blustery day in Cleveland, Ohio. First pitch taken for a called strike. Yeah, his velocity is right around 92. Maybe a, when he won the Cy Young back in 2020, a mile or two higher. 7 10 first pitch tonight, Friday, September the 22nd, 2023. Wind blowing in as it often does here at Progressive Field. It probably will help the ball down the left field line. Of course, if you hit it right by the pole, it's probably going to go foul. And there's that big overhand hook. A clear 72 degree night here, and always a bit of an adventure for an outfielder <laughs> September in Cleveland. There's Terry Francona, one of the best managers of his era. That will be Terry Francona's last year as the manager of the Guardians. It's his 11th year with Cleveland, a winning season, nine of 10 years. But the Guardians would have to win out to get to 500 this year. Back with a loss, they will be officially eliminated from the American League Central chase, fouled away by Henderson, two and two. Yeah, the what the 23rd year he has managed Philadelphia, Boston, and a couple of world titles because. It's hard to uh, deal with the losses, even though he's probably going to end up in the Hall of Fame. Henderson <laughs> shoots one through the vacant left side. Ramirez was playing well off third. Gunnar Henderson takes advantage and starts game two with an opposite field single. Well, take a look at their defense. Uh, Quan, who is up there with the leader, second best defensive runs for a left fielder. Straw, they traded. We just saw Diaz oh, traded him to, to Houston. Brennan and Wright, Ramirez. Well, he's supposed to be playing third. He was playing short, and that's why the ball. Uh, and then you've got Jimenez, who's again a great defender, nailer. To Cleveland defense with some former Gold Glovers, and it's Cleveland defense that will have some Gold Glovers probably this year. Andre Jimenez and Stephen Kwan having excellent defensive years, as is Ramirez down at third. Adley Rutschman, Stephen Kwan's former college teammate at Oregon State. Rutschman grounds the ball foul on a cutter, 0 and 2. Adley up to sixth in the American League and on base percentage, 368, reaching base about 37% of his plate appearances. 85 walks. Those are the fifth most in the AL. 0 and 2 from Bieber. And Rutschman chases a high fastball for strike three. Shane Bieber with a K for his first out. He had the ability because of his command to pitch up in the zone at 92. Breaking balls down and in, and then you just go to the far outside corner, see if he'll chase. And he usually doesn't do that. 96 strikeouts, 117 and two thirds for Bieber, a number that is well down this year. One on one out and another cutter fouled away by Anthony Santander. This is a matchup that Anthony Santander won back on May the 31st one of two home runs both of his hits historically against Bieber have left the park. Aaron Hicks a home run at three walks and Ryan O'Hearn said he really sees it well against Bieber. O'Hearn on deck as Anthony takes ball one. Santander yesterday 0 for 4 did drive in a run with a ground out in the Orioles two run eight. 
We had the night off from the game. The Orioles did not. They trailed 2 0 into the eighth, tied it with two, and then gave up three runs in an eighth inning that featured three different relievers. Henderson's on the run, and this ball is up in the gap in right center field. A hit and a run executed to perfection as Gunnar Henderson will score easily. Jogging in from third and an RBI double from Anthony Santander. And after the Orioles were shut out for seven innings last night, they strike in three batters. Yeah, a lot of times if you're going to start a runner, what you're hoping for is uh, maybe one of the infielders eventually is going to have to cover, but this is a line drive up the gap. And I don't know change up. We talked about the 444 batting average. So there you go, 102 up the gap. You can see Gunnar Henderson makes sure the ball's not caught, and then makes it one nothing Orioles. Ryan O'Hearn down the line and fair. Josh Naylor makes the play as Santander takes third. And we introduce you to today's umpire crew, which is anchored by Nestor Seha behind the plate. Crew chief is Brian O'Nor at first, long sleeves. Chris Siegel, long sleeves at second. Tom Hanahan, long sleeves at third. Only Nestor Seha braving the elements in short sleeves behind the plates. Yeah, he's going to be doing a lot of moving around. Aaron Hicks. That ball bounces away from Naylor. Here comes Santander, and he slides in with the left hand. <laughs> Unusual but effective. Anthony dancing in on a wild pitch, and the Orioles have two in the first. Well, great anticipation. You know, we always talk about getting the read. Look him here up at the top of the left screen. And the minute he sees the ball, no hesitation at all. He beats Bieber to home plate. Well, that little curveball, you want to, you know, you want to trust your catcher. Bo Naylor doing the catching, the brother of the first baseman. He's not able to keep it in front of it, and the Orioles take a 2 0 lead. Seventh wild pitch of the year on court by Bieber. And the Orioles have matched their run total from last night. They've surpassed their run total from Tuesday in Houston as well. They lose a net game two to one. So Hicks, who was two for four yesterday, a couple of infield hits. And another one spiked by Bieber on a bouncing curveball. Well, the two pitches he throws the least, the curveball and the changeup, have both bit him this inning. Hicks fouls away a fastball two at two. Yeah the uh, the game against the Orioles in Baltimore you know, it's just a, it's kind of an outlier. I mean he gave, pitched four innings gave up eight hits seven runs the previous five starts seven or more innings 11 strikeouts as Carl Willis the big train looking on their pitching coach. What does it tell you that he's missing so far down so often. Well he's a tall guy and he's a control guy and he only had two rehab starts and hasn't pitched since July. That one is oh. down at the knees and Hicks frozen for strike three <laughs> couple of strikeouts but a couple of runs on a couple of hits Dean Kramer takes them out with a lead.
lead the majors in plate appearances per strikeout, but they are last in the majors in home runs, and as a result, they're 27th of 30 teams in runs. A lot of contact hitters in this lineup. The big bat is Jose Ramirez, and they have the Naylor brothers, Josh and Bo, who have both been hot, to face Dean Kramer, making start number 31. Yeah, he's really had a nice year. I mean, the Orioles have played well. Actually pitched maybe ERA, ERA less home runs last year, but a lot of run support. Already got a 2 nothing lead. And I always felt when my team got me, especially on the road, a 2 nothing lead, you're in pretty good shape till you give up three. I mean, it really makes you, even though you know he wants to throw a lot of strikes, and of course, they're the Masters, what, 37 foul balls off of Grayson Rodriguez. In just after, five innings. Yeah, after he comes off a masterful eight inning performance against the Rays. Stephen Kwan, the toughest batter to strike out in the American League, 348 on base. And Kwan takes a curveball up and away. Well, they play him really shallow in the outfield. I mean, they play him uh, kind of like the way we played Maury Wills in the 66 World Series. He didn't, he didn't throw hunt, steal 102 bases like Morey did, but he does. If he gets on, he can steal some bases. That curveball's last in the right center, and Santander does very well to cut it off as shallow as he was playing. And so he holds Quan to a single, but the Guardians have the leadoff man on. Well, take a look at the defense: Hayes, Hicks, Santander, Urias, Gold Glover, Henderson is short, Westberg at second, O'Hearn over at first, and Adley Rushman behind the plate. So we saw Bieber get hurt on on his changeup, highest batting average, and if you look at what Dean Kramer does, highest average is on the curveball. And Quan just stayed back and hit the hanging curveball in the right field. Here's Jose Ramirez, and Ramirez first pitch ripping on a fastball out of play. One of baseball's best third baseman, one of the American League's best players once again, Jose Ramirez. Every year he doubles and homers and <laughs> hits his way to finishing near the top of the MVP. Top six, five of the last six years in MVP voting. Ramirez checks the swing on another curveball from but Kramer. Yeah, that's the good one. I mean, that's the one he wanted to throw to to Quan and couldn't do it. Just left it up a little bit. Yeah, and of course Ramirez, he can run, he can steal bases, he's got 27 steals, he can hit home runs, he's a switch hitter. Does a lot of things to help you win ball games. And Ramirez foul tips a fastball running away, one and two. Turned 31 years old on Sunday, Jose Ramirez. He's been with Cleveland for a long time. He'll be there a long time more. And this is a frustrating situation for Cleveland potentially. James Karinchak warming up in the second inning. Shane Bieber's return yeah. from. A couple of injuries right forearm irritation right elbow inflammation were both issues and I've been told that our cameras cannot find Shane Bieber right now in the dugout so he is out of sight after just 19 pitches in the first Ramirez grounds one two first fair ball O'Hearns on the bag and he will stick it in his glove. Quan to second on the first out. Yeah, nice little cutter. So you get it out, they get a runner into scoring position. Orioles at 287 as a team with runners in scoring position. You talked about contact there. One of the other reasons that they're down in runs, especially at home, they only score about 3.75s is the runs per game is that they're only hitting 244. Now, a little different here when Josh Naylor comes to the plate, having a monster year. All right, so Shane Bieber is back in the dugout now. James Karachak is still on the mound and still throwing in the Cleveland bullpen, so maybe he's just getting some early work in. Uh, sometimes we're told James Karachak does just warm up early in the game for the heck of it, so maybe Shane Bieber is okay here as Naylor grounds one out of play. Yeah, it's not the old days when Earl Weaver used to get a guy that he didn't want coming in and he'd warm him up. And that was his way of trying to motivate you. Well, it is James' 28th birthday today, so oh, really? well, maybe he's Happy just birthday. giving okay. himself a little extra birthday bullpen. Yeah, he just came back. I mean, he was a terrific pitcher for him last year, the year before. 
He just came back from being recalled in Triple A. Two strikes on Naylor, one of the RBI leaders in the league. Ninth in the AL. Naylor, a little punch shot left field. That falls in for a base hit, and that right there is Cleveland Guardians baseball. Two strike counts, soft contact, hoping to find the green grass, and does. Quan, who had to hold, gets to third with one out. Well, take a look right here. I mean, just inside out. This is how you hit 300. You don't overswing, and even though he's got power, I mean, he's got 17 home runs, came in with 94 RBIs, which leads this club. That's a pretty good pitch, but a bad result for Dean Kramer. So first and third one out. It is statistically speaking a big drop off after those three but Cole Calhoun does have some power. And the 35 year old takes one way up high at 96. Yeah, we remember him when he played with the Angels. Very low batting average with runners in scoring position. He'd love to be able to turn a double play here. Otherwise, he, uh, unless you strike them out, they're going to get on the board. Yeah, the other thing is, uh, you know, first inning is usually, not always, but I mean, obviously, you know, you come in, different mound, different conditions with the wind blowing, as you mentioned, Kevin, and they're putting pressure on you. So you either need a strikeout, and it's hard to do that when you get 2 and 0, oh, or they're going to get back on the board. And, and they're going to get back on the board. Base hit Calhoun. It gets past Santander who slips. One run is in. Naylor held at third. And on the slippage, Calhoun goes to second. An RBI double. He drilled a changeup into the corner. And Cleveland has a run back. So hanging curveball for the base hit to Quan. And then right here, here's your changeup. And it just says, hit me. This is not a quality pitch like Naylor hit. So now all of a sudden. You're in big time trouble. 105 off the bat of the 12th year big leaguer Cole Calhoun. And it's going to bring up one of their hottest hitters in the month of September. And Andres Jimenez hitting over 350. Infield is back. And Kramer missing up again with a fastball. Yeah, Jimenez with a, uh, I still remember it. I mean, he's only faced him twice, but he hit a three run home run last year in Camden Yards. Jimenez chops one out of play wide of Sandy Alomar Jr., the Guardians' first base coach. Not a league average hitter on the season. 316 on base percentage, slugging 391, Jimenez. Excellent speed and having an excellent month of September, as you mentioned. Best batting average in the AL in September. Not a ton of power, but a lot of hits. And Jimenez chases a changeup for strike two. This is a Cleveland team that strikes out less than any other team in baseball. They are only 27th in runs scored per game. They have the third lowest slugging percentage in baseball, the fourth worst on base percentage. But in contact situations like this, they really do excel. Jimenez, fastball was very high, he still elevates it to deep right field. Naylor's going to come in and he will score ahead of the throw by Santander. Calhoun to third. Two for the O's, two for the guards here in the first on a sack fly from Jimenez. Well, you said your mindset as a starting pitcher would be, well, I got two. They got to get three <laughs> now, and they've already gotten two back. Gabriel Arias, Cleveland shortstop, batting sixth. And Arias chases well, yeah, a fastball. And to my point, the game's still tied. Yeah. Now, it won't stay tied very long if he's going to throw hanging curveballs and hanging changeups, which is how they got on the board here. Naylor hit a good pitch. The other two, you would 
classify as mistakes even that change up right there for the sacrifice fly was not where he wanted to get the ball. 23 years old it has been a very very frustrating year for Arias who has hit right handers well not lefties at all. He's got a right hander here he's behind one and two. Arias may be the worst hitter in baseball <laughs> against lefties. He's hitting 084, 9 out of 107 as a right handed batter. But for whatever reason, he does hit righties well. 817 OPS. And a fastball here, line hard into right. Oh, Santander wow. takes away the potential third <laughs> run. That's what I was talking about. You get two, you give up two, but not three, thanks to Anthony Santander. Splendid catch. Richest contestant of the game, John Dawson from Rockville, Maryland, has won $500 for being selected and will win $500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Play fast, play home run, Richest bases loaded progressive ticket for a chance to win cash instantly. Play fast, win fast at any MD Lottery retailer. County seat of Cuyahoga County. Here we are in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. Landmark bridges here in the city, the Holt Memorial Bridge with the Guardians of Traffic, which was part of the inspiration when the team changed the name from the Indians to the Guardians a couple of years ago. Kept the font, kept the color scheme, kept the last five letters of the name, the Cleveland Guardians. Shane Bieber is back out there facing Austin Hayes. And Hayes is late on a fastball at 90. It's about four miles per hour lower than where we saw Shane Bieber in his Cy Young year in 2020. Yeah velocity uh, shoulder injury the next year. This fastball has popped up Josh Naylor hoping for a play and hoping against hope. Only 28 years old Shane Bieber and he has put together an outstanding career an all star twice fourth first and seventh place finishes in a Cy Young and you can see by the color of his mitt a gold glover from a season ago. Questions with Shane Bieber number one how healthy will he be in the future number two where will his future be he is set to be a free agent after next season. His name has come up in trade discussions but he was hurt at the deadline this year. Hayes to the right side Jimenez the smooth second baseman throws him out. 
With Orioles online auctions, you can score exclusive Orioles game-used items from your favorite players. This weekend's auction features a game-used Adley Rutschman jersey and game-used bases. From the day where the Orioles clinched the playoffs on Sunday, bidding closes this Sunday night at 10. Proceeds benefit the O's Charitable Foundation. Bid now at Orioles.com slash auction. Here's the hard-hitting Heston Kerstad. Strike one with a cutter. Yeah, something other than a fastball, which is what Shane Bieber can do when he's on his game. Down to first from Kerstad, a rare soft bit of contact. Two ground outs for Bieber in the second. Well, the one thing he can do, I mean, obviously the first inning when you give up a couple of runs, pitch count goes up, but he's right around 15 pitches per inning. So he can be efficient. But again, a couple of rehab starts. I'm sure he wanted to get back out there before the season ended with the elbow problems. Jordan Westberg. Walked and struck out in his two at bats yesterday. The walk took 13 pitches against Cleveland starter Hunter Gaddis in the third last night. Gaddis went only three innings up from Triple A. Guardians used five relievers in the game. So neither team's bullpen is in pristine shape into tonight. Orioles using five relievers as well. What Gaddis took one off the kneecap somewhere in the lower leg. <laughs> Listening to Terry Francona talk about you know coming up I mean it's almost like an opener even though they wanted him to go a little bit longer he's he, Carl Willis the, the big train is a pitching coach he goes Carl wants to adopt him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry Francona one of the good guys great manager. Terry's dealt with myriad health issues the last couple of years and so this is going to be it for him he hasn't officially announced his retirement but he has basically said he's retiring as Westberg chases a curveball in the dirt Naylor gets to it a little bit late and throws to his brother to complete the out in a one two three inning for Shane Bieber. Bay leading Toronto 1 0. Harold Ramirez singled in Randy Rosarena in the first. So here's a little magic number, Matt. <laughs> the O's magic number is seven. They go seven and two, they win the division. If they go six and three, the Rays have to win out. But if the Orioles go five and four or four and five, their odds are still good. Tampa Bay would have to be very, very good down the stretch to win. You can see the remaining schedules more difficult on paper for Tampa Bay. 
Six of the Rays' final eight games will be against Toronto. Then they will go to Boston for two. The Orioles have three more here in Cleveland, two against the Nats, and then four at home against the Red Sox. Will Brennan slices one the other way. Left center field, another gapper for Cleveland. Brennan on his horse to second. And Brennan, who does not have a lot of extra base hits into second, only his 29th extra base hit in 133 games. He doubles against Dean Kramer. Now take a look. I mean, it's just a fastball away. This is where you're supposed to hit it. Use the whole field, drive it up the gap. And you can see Dean knows it's going to get between the left fielder and the center fielder. Let's see if Bo Naylor can either get him in or over. When you don't score a lot of runs, that's your job. Younger brother of first baseman Josh. Bo takes ball one. 23 pitches in the first from Dean Kramer. Jim, what do you see? Just, you know, a couple of bad pitches. Hung a curve ball to Quan. Naylor hit a good pitch. Hit it to left field softly. That's down the right field line and fouled from Bo Naylor. Then hung a change up to Calhoun for a double. And then got two strike. We got behind uh, Jimenez and uh, threw another hanging change up and you get a sacrifice five. There's your two runs. So it wasn't an inning where he made a lot of good pitches and got unlucky. So what do you do? You, you try to make better pitches. It's usually what he's able to do. Left side, a floating line drive right to Ramon. Birdland come to Camden Yards next weekend for Fan Appreciation Weekend. The series begins Thursday, Fan Appreciation Weekend. Kicks off Friday the 29th through Sunday the 1st as the Orioles host the Red Sox to close the regular season. Pre-game activities, music giveaways, and more all weekend long. Buy your tickets today at Orioles.com slash tickets. Still some regular season tickets available. Postseason tickets went like hotcakes when they were on sale a couple of days ago. As the Orioles prepare to host some postseason games, they'll either start in the wild card series or the American League Division Series, and they will host the series either way. Miles Straw, nine hitter, takes strike two. First postseason bid is secured for Brandon Hyde, who is reaching a big round number today, his 700th. Game as Oriole manager. Believe it or not, Brandon should pass Hank Bauer next year for the fourth most games managed in Orioles history. Yeah, he'd like to do what Hank did back in '66, which is win a world championship. Hank managed 726 regular season games behind Paul Richards, Buck Showalter, and of course Earl. Mm. Center uh. field base hit for Straw, one of the weakest hitters in baseball. Lines one up the middle. Hicks his throw to the plate is short and to the left. And Miles Straw, a player who is 37 percent below league average, puts the Guardians in front. Well. Juan started it off. He's going to come to the plate now. I mean, hit a hanging curveball for a base hit. Check this one out. I mean, right down the middle. Slaps it back up the middle. The Orioles are very lucky because they don't hit the cutoff pin. That straw with great speed doesn't get into scoring position. 29th RBI for Straw. 498 trips to the plate, and he can run. Not going here on ball one to Quan. So the first time through the Guardians go five for eight with a sacrifice fly against Kramer. Yeah the, the, the one thing about Dean he's been very very consistent but when he gets in trouble a couple of starts ago that was the case against St. Louis he creates he gets 
Instead of throwing over his front side, he he creates arm speed by actually rotating his body. So if you get a little bit tired, you rotate your body, and and if you're not really in sync, the ball flattens out. I mean, we just look at all the pitches today, and they've all been up. You know, curveball usually has really good spin rate, not so much so far. And there are some times where you just feel I can't stay. I just cannot stay closed. I can't stay closed. But he, he has a uh, you know we were taught to throw like a Ferris wheel over your front side. He he's more like a merry-go-round. So if he gets out of sync, stuff flattens out. Let's take one more look at what you're saying with the merry-go-round here. I mean, he has a good windup, and he, you know, the stuff is good. He's got five pitches or, or so to, to choose from. I mean, if you look at the batting averages, only the curveball, which is unusual, because coming through the minor leagues, that was his calling card. But he's kind of gotten away from it a little bit. Tried the sweeper early in the years. That that wasn't going to work. Two and two for Quan, who hits one sharply, base hit left center field, and Hicks. Bobbles it. It's picked up by Hayes. There goes Straw to third, and he is stopped right there. Boy, the Guardians are just hitting one gapper after another. Stephen Kwan is two for two. It's second and third, one out, one in, and a 3 2 game. Yeah, and Ramirez, I mean, the, you know, Jose's going to come to the plate, so you take a look. I mean, here's another hang and change up. And, you know there are nights when you just don't finish your pitches and so far this is one for Dean Kramer. Let me just think about it this team as Chris Holt's going to come out and, and talk to Dean. This team doesn't swing through a lot of pitches. They just try to hit the ball back up the middle and they've been doing that all night. We're only in the second inning. And as Brandon Hyde said if Kramer doesn't pitch well who am I going to pitch. So I guess we may have to see. And this is one of the worst offensive teams in the league and yet they put up 22 runs in three games at Oriole Park earlier this year. One two of three in that series. Well they won five nothing lost eight to five and then got 17 hits and 12 runs and when they came in Rick Manning who I used to pitch again does tell us he said oh, we're not hitting. That was not the case. So here is Ramirez. Infield is in for one of the league's most fearsome hitters. And Kramer misses with ball one. Again, the, the numbers are very poor for Cleveland, but when they get the leadoff man on and when they can get the line moving and these contact hitters up, all of a sudden, without a ball that gets over anybody's head, they can put up two, three, four runs in a hurry. Ramirez, big swing at a cutter. Yeah, the new uh, the new rules in 2023. You're down 3-2. You got one of the best hitters, and you play the infield in. And that's an analytical decision. Let's see if it pays off. In my ear, you go. We got to play back. Give up a run, and we're only down by two. You play in, hits a little looper, hits a ball sharper, you don't get it, and then all of a sudden three to two is five to two. They're all in now at a two one for Ramirez. Who swings and misses and Rutschman oh, wow. nearly throws it away at third. What a play by Urias to save a run. Yeah, snap throw, and then of course you don't want to be throwing it into the runner, otherwise they'll get the left field. And then there's the, what you were talking about, Urias. Great angle right here. I mean, he's actually throwing it to where he was. 2 2. Oh, the changeup well off the plate. Yeah, a lot of changeups tonight. You know, maybe not feeling good about the cutter. The cut fastball is. His lowest batting average pitch at 228, even though 10 home runs on that pitch. Popped out of play, still three at two. 
you get an idea that I mean they still will chase out of the zone but they don't chase and swing through balls and I think that has a lot to do with the, the approach. Chris Ramirez as we mentioned he's got 24 home runs he's he, he doesn't he, he does not take soft swings. Seven pitch to Ramirez three two and he yeah. swings and misses strike three. Well there's the really good changeup, right when you need it. He's going how did I swing through that well it was in a good location it had good watch this ball move great life right on the corner. The third toughest hitter to strike out in the majors Jose Ramirez just went down with runners at second and third one out and now ball one to Josh Naylor who singled his first time up on a two strike pitch that was up and in really nice approach. I mean this is their guy with runners in scoring position coming in at three fifty eight. There's just a lot of change ups in the middle of the plate and this guy's got some serious power. Naylor's driven in and I know RBIs are a, a flawed statistic based on who's on base in front of you but he's driven in 94 runs in 113 games that is overwhelming production. Chases one up and away one and two. He had some oblique problems, so he doesn't have as many at bats coming in with what now 423 at bats. Quan with over 600. Dean Kramer has given up the lead but if he can get out of this jam with only one run against in the second it may feel like he saved his start for the time being. One and two. I'm close. But the last thing Brandon Hyde needed was a high pitch count from a starter and this is going to be forty nine in two innings and in a normal game. He'd be about thirty two for two innings sixteen an inning. Yeah, there's the good cutter. So ideally you'd like to throw that pitch at two and two get him off the plate and then come back with a change up or something right on the outside corners. So we'll see if he does that Cole. Go Calhoun, so who's already doubled. Not close on a 3 2. Kramer walks Naylor. Bases loaded for Calhoun. First uh, yeah, walk on, for Cleveland. I, I think it's almost like a pitch around. Either make your pitch or I'll take the guy that's hitting 130 with runners and scoring. But I know I made him a change up in the middle of the plate. He doubled. If I don't make that mistake, maybe I get him out. The other guy's hitting 358. It's a calculated risk, but I think it's one sometimes that'll work. Fifty pitches in two innings, and here is Calhoun with an RBI double on his ledger. And another yeah. high fastball yeah. miss. Yeah, see how flat his stuff is tonight? Again, he's going left and and when you know, he was talking about it after the uh, the game against the Cardinals when you rotate too much you, you not only does your front old shoulder open up your arm drops. So everything doesn't have the same spin rate. And there's another one just underneath everything. Now all of a sudden what do you do base is loaded you're down three to two you got to throw him a ball I mean really have to throw a ball for the middle of the plate and hope it doesn't go there. Career high innings pitch for Kramer, 165 and two thirds now. That yeah. is a high strike yeah. on a cutter. Nice pitch. Get you back into the count a little bit. K 
Calhoun got a 2 1 changeup. Bashed it down the line for a double in the first. Ooh. Yeah, he's going to take a little stroll. Not even close. And Brandon Hyde just hoping, hoping that he can get out of this inning. Pitch number 32 of the inning. In the air left side and foul. Yeah, the Orioles have used so many relievers. Uh, Irvin was sent out on 9 13, so unless there's an injury, he can't come back for 15 games. Baker on 9 16, he can't come back for 15 days. Crable, 9 12, Vespi, 9 13. So you don't have really a long man in your bullpen unless it's going to be Tyler Wells, who was just called up. Who pitched an inning two days yeah. ago. Exactly. Start the merry-go-round. Straw, Quan, and Naylor will run on 3 2, and it's strike three swinging a high fastball, and Calhoun chased it. Cleveland gets one and only one. That beautiful looking man in the number 22 jersey is celebrating his 60th anniversary with the Orioles organization. And next Friday, we are honoring Jim Palmer we are. in a special <laughs> pregame ceremony as he celebrates 60 years with the organization and a list of accomplishments that could take us the rest of the game to fill. We are indeed. 60 anniversary really? 60th anniversary 60 years for the Orioles next Friday. I guess I'll have to be there. Then, I guess I? you will. <laughs> I hope you were planning on being I'm going to send Ben down to, uh, <laughs> to do whatever especially if I have to throw out the pitch. Well congratulations 60th okay. anniversary you. with the organization 268 games three Cy Young's and um, beyond that well, you've been such an incredible broadcast partner and friend to so many of us through the years. So well, thank you really appreciate that. You know thank the Angelos family. Uh, and um, yeah. I'm not sure it's warranted, but I, I think it is. I but think, I'll show I think up. 60's uh, yeah, warranted. I, I'll, I'll definitely show up. In case you were thinking about maybe just yeah. mailing that day in and letting me and Ben handle it, we are going to wrestle well, you down. At least they didn't schedule it on Saturday because that's a Fox game. That's so. Right. <laughs> so you can do whatever you so want. I, yeah, Saturday. I can make sure it's. Of course, you get it. You got to go to the ballpark, especially down the stretch the right. way the Orioles are playing. Ramona Rios, the batter here against Shane Bieber. And that ball driven the other way, right center field by Urias. Hit deep and off the very top of the wall. Ramon racing around second as the ball kicked away from Brennan, and it's a leadoff triple in the Oriole third. You know, it's amazing that when we got to the ballpark, the wind was really gusting from right to left. So you figure there's no way in the world that this ball is not going to get held up by the wind. And and he smokes this ball. I mean, it's, that's the really the farthest part of this ballpark, and 
Strong can go get him. Won a gold glove last year, and then you get the Karen. <laughs> here comes Brennan, and then Urias really reads it well. And it's exactly where you want to be with nobody out at third base. It's third triple of the year. Got her Henderson. Yeah, Fair ball, ball. pass to drawn <laughs> in infield. How do you like that? Right down the line and right. Henderson will hold up at second. And the Orioles have extra base hits on back to back pitches. And three runs isn't going to be enough to do it tonight. Well, you want to play your infield in and a three to two lead, but nobody out in the third inning. Go ahead. Now I don't know if he catches this ball. Naylor's a pretty good first base, but he thinks it's foul. It goes right over the bag. Bieber can't believe it. You can see him hopping around. So here's your time run three three and Gunnar Henderson with nobody out. Making 28 doubles for Gunnar, 64 extra base hits in his rookie year. And Shane Bieber in some trouble here in the third as he throws a strike to Rutschman. Well, triple double. Maybe the Orioles can hit for a cycle here in the third. Maybe. I said they're going to win. The Orioles are going to win eight to five. That's that was my prediction. Okay. In between. Rutschman right back to Bieber. He'll throw to third on oh, Henderson. He'll throw go. it away. <laughs> Big mistake by the Gold Glover Bieber. A wayward throw and Henderson dusts himself off and comes in to score. And the Orioles just like that are back on top four to three. That doesn't happen a whole lot. Did win the gold glove last year. In fact, he's got it on because that was the arm. That had nothing to do with the glove. Got it. So you you know obviously if, if you're a good fielding pitcher and Bieber is I mean Shane can pick it right here you catch it you got the lead runner of course you're throwing into the hill and Ramirez has to reach into Henderson who's a big guy and you can hear him thundering as he comes into third throws it away. Fielder's choice E1. Orioles first three have reached here in the third and now Santander in search of another RBI. Yeah, needs to get Henderson to third. Hit a ground ball right side, get him in, get him over, make them play their infield in with O'Hearn, who's the uh, got the best batting average with runners in scoring position. And that's how you score the eight runs that I predicted tonight. <laughs> Halfway to the Palmer it's not prediction that hard. right I, now. Yeah, it's that ball is spiked. <laughs> Another wild pitch. Bieber's second of the game, and Rutschman takes third. That's all part of the game plan, Kevin. Errors, doubles, triples, wild pitches. Yeah, it's, it's in the cards. <laughs> right here. Naylor can't catch it. See, you didn't get to 60 years without knowing a thing or two about the game plan. <laughs> yeah, like people at home knew that. That's why we're having the ceremony or whatever we're having on Friday night. Santander yeah, smashes yeah, yeah. it right through the middle. Up the box for a base hit, and it is a three run third with out and out. Anthony Santander, two at bats and two RBI hits. It's five to three birds. Once again, play the infield in, try to cut off a run. If you hit the ball hard, which Anthony does, easier to get it through the field. Extra velocity, such a big part of hitting. Right here, not a bad pitch. Slaps it back up the middle. You're playing in, so you lose your range up the middle. So not only the Orioles get that fifth run, they have Anthony Santander for O'Hearn. And he is not an easy touch this year. Talking about having a great year. O'Hearn hits Bieber very well. Saw him a lot with Kansas City. Six out of 18, now three extra base hits career against Shane Bieber. Go back to Ryan O'Hearn's last 21 games overall. He's driven in 20. His batting average is 355. He is barely walking, but he is seriously hitting. And he is pretty close to a walk right now. Well, Bieber is not an easy touch either. I mean, he came into this game, and yeah, he's coming off elbow problems, only a couple of rehabs. But 59 and 32 with an ERA of a little bit over three and a quarter a run a game. 
That 3 0 pitch is off the plate. Ryan O'Hearn's got a four pitch walk, and the first five Orioles have reached base in the third. And Carl Willis, longtime pitching coach on a couple of occasions, going to come out and have a discussion. You want to hear something crazy about that walk by Ryan O'Hearn? That is his first since. I know you didn't answer. I just went ahead. Sorry. No, I know. I'm as, I was waiting. <laughs> I mean, drum roll. That's his first <laughs> walk since August 15th. And in that time span, he's only dropped three points of on base, and his average has gone up by nine points. Well, Kevin, when you get two to three hits every night, batting Pretty average good. is not going Why down. walk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But O'Hearn with his 14th walk of the year, and the Orioles have runners at first and second. For that is an, yeah, that is an amazing factoid, you know, that he, because you would think that you would be pitching around him on occasion. Well, here's what the Orioles have done in their last 11 games, and you found yeah. this commonality in the wins and the losses. It's not just a difference; it's yeah. a big difference. Yeah, and that's. You know they've, they've gone five and six in those 11 games when we were kind of talking about that and uh, of course they have the best they're the best team in baseball collectively. And it's not that they can't hit home runs what uh, in Houston they hit four on Tuesday night. The three run home run by Mullins that turned the game around on Monday. But over the course of this year it's all been about getting clutch hitting. And they are two for four tonight. With runners in scoring position. With a 1 1 count on Aaron Hicks. Now, this is not just somebody throwing for fun. Nick Sandlin is up for real in the Cleveland bullpen. Hicks ground ball to second base. Hit slowly. There's one, and there is two. Jimenez Arias Naylor. And the Guardians. Get what they needed. Two outs yeah. on one pitch as Santander takes third. Yeah, that's a huge out. Uh, you know, if you're Shane Bieber, number one, you're a Cy Young Award winner. Yeah, you're coming off an elbow injury, but if you get two outs with one pitch, you've kind of paid attention. Dean Kramer is not as sharp, even though he got out of the last inning as he normally is. But you're very much still in this game. And you're only the third inning. Ball in the hand of Bieber, and the bat is in the hands of Hicks or Hayes with two out. Austin Hayes chases one in the dirt. Well, that's his best pitch. 165 on the slider. And we told you about what? Five starts, seven innings or more, 11 strikeouts when he's healthy. And that wasn't the case in May when the Orioles got seven runs off him. That's the definitive pitch. That's his signature pitch, the slider from righty to righty. And there's the hook. When Shane Bieber was winning the Cy Young in 2020, the slider curveball combination was so, so strong. And those are still his best two pitches statistically. A little bit like Kyle Bradish has been this year. Mm -hmm. Yep, and there it is, low and away. 91. Not going to light up the radar gun, but long away fastballs gets him out of the innings. Orioles up 5 3.
Any under the favorite at minus 125. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. New customers can bet five, get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Use promo code DIAMOND when you sign up. Kevin Brown in the Hall of Famer, the man that Reggie Jackson calls Diamond, <laughs> Diamond Jim Palmer. Jim. Diamond Jim. Brett Hollander with us as well, our massive crew. We're here in Cleveland. Big Brett. Well, that's Big Ben. What do we call it? Baltimore Brett. That's what we call him. Baltimore Brett, is that yeah. what we call him? Baltimore Brett. The I'm, Big Ben. I'm not aware of a nickname we've previously had. So, well. Baltimore Brett, that could be in the running. I mean, Brett is a nickname of sorts himself. You know, it's not his real name. <laughs> it's a ground out to second off the bat of Jimenez. It's okay. my real name. It's just my middle What's name that I've always name? gone by. Yeah. What is your first name? It's William Jim. James, I should say. Sorry. Okay. okay. William Brett Hollander. For whatever reason, my parents from day one called me Brett. And I used to hate the first day of school when attendance would be taken. And I had to explain this every first day of William? school. Is is William? Is William Hollander here? there? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever considered going by W.B. Hollander? Sure. The I, law offices of W.B. Hollander. We'll see you now. It does sound a bit pretentious. <laughs> well, that's why it would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> No, sorry, Brett. <laughs> it's too good, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm more. I, I, I'm very disappointed. I thought we were going to get our eight runs right there in that inning and uh, Hicks in a double play. So I'm a little disappointed. Um, we're just joshing, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my brother used to tease me. So nothing's changed. <laughs> Your brother, Jim Palmer, basically the same person. Yeah. One and the same. <laughs> I was going to be for my on-air name, Bill Brett. That's just perfect alliteration. Two first names. Bill Brent. Oh, we kind of like this. This is going to help your prediction on the other end. Yeah. Two well, ground outs to second. I have faith in Dean Kramer. I figured, okay, he made enough bad pitches in the first inning to get it out of his system. And we saw, I mean, you know, we go back and, you know, a lot of times you can't. Sometimes you just make bad pitches. And if they're making contact, it, that kind of stuff happens. But at the end of the day, he's really had a good year. He's given him a lot of innings. And uh, when they needed a big clutch game, like against Tampa Bay, one run them with games they needed to win. Strike to Will Brennan. He's thrown six pitches in the inning. They've all been strikes. There's the first ball outside to Brennan, who doubled and scored in the second. Cleveland with two in the first, one in the second. Baltimore, two in the first, three in the third. By the way, the Blue Jays have just put together a nice little sixth inning. Oh, it's 4-1. I was just going to say 3-1, and the Blue Jays apparently have just taken a 4-1 lead with the bases loaded at the trop. Well, they need to win, too. Yes. I mean, they want to get you know, into the wild card, so. We all love Canada this weekend more than ever. <laughs> oh, Canada. Just not... When you know Bo and Josh Naylor, who are Canadian, are concerned. Well, we like him. We, yeah, yeah, he's at, just he, hope they make some Bo's in the big leagues. Naylor's having a great year. Again, the magic number is seven. That's a combination of Orioles wins and Rays losses. Orioles could do it themselves. They could win out, or go eight and one, or seven and two. But it's seven Orioles wins plus Rays losses. So there's a long, long way to go. But if the O's win and the Rays lose tonight, magic number drops to five. This one dug out, fouled away by Brennan. Well, everybody, a few you, know, you know, Brennan Hyde, everybody's aware that whether you're an Oriole fan or you're playing for him, you're coaching, that it's Im not imperative, but you get to set up your pitching rotation. You, you get to have, what, five days off between if you win your division. If you, you have to be a wild card, you're not not a much off time. So win the division. You know, it's not like Tampa's not a good team. I mean, they started out what twenty and three. They were forty and eighteen. The first fifty eight games and had a bunch of injuries. Three lost three starters. Tommy John. So they've hung in there. And I thought everybody was really complimentary whether it was Kevin Cash or Brandon Hyde everybody if if you play a team like the Rays you know they're a very good mm -hmm. team and they know the Orioles are 
very good. Everybody talks when we come into a city about how well the Orioles are played. Brennan yeah. is a real pain in the neck right now. He's fouled off five two strike pitches and he is spoiling what looked like it was going to be a quick inning for Kramer who is now up to 70 pitches. Well that's primarily the first two innings. I mean this inning he's been very efficient. The quality of the pitches has, has totally changed. Back to being Dean Kramer. Tenth pitch. This one is put into fair territory and Arias throws him out on the run. So Dean Kramer does only throw 15 pitches in a shutdown third. More area Toyota dealers for legendary safety and reliability. Choose Toyota and let's go places. Three innings down in Cleveland. It's been another long game. <laughs> They're all long. The there, Orioles they? are not yeah. exactly racing through these games <laughs> with a pitch clock, but they are winning this game five to three. Yesterday they played three hours and 11 minutes. Lost five to two, so this game already with more total runs. Shane Bieber's pitch count, we think, will curb at about 80 tonight. It's at 56 here. First start back in the big league since July the 9th. He's one and one on Heston Kerstad. Bieber made two rehab starts, three and two thirds with the Triple A Columbus Clippers Sunday through 64 pitches. Walked three in that game, struck out seven against the Toledo Mudhens, and now here he is pitching against the American League best Orioles. Three and one to Kerstat. Had a pinch hit single in the eighth last night. Eston is still looking for his first big league walks, five for 19. And he probably would have had it there. <laughs> yeah, but aggressive and a little cutter. I mean, like you talked about, he hits the ball hard. And that's the Crawford boxes. He really just kind of hit a fly ball, but it plays there. And then this pitch, I don't know how he hit this off Eflin. I mean, a good cutter and smoked it. This one high in the air, hit the other way as well, driving straw to the warning track, and Kerstad flies out. 99 off the bat, but a little too much elevation. 2024 Birdland memberships are on sale now. As fans limited access remaining, receive access to postseason tickets. Benefits including an increased discount on concessions and merchandise up to 30% off Birdland rewards and more by a flex or reserved Birdland membership at Orioles.com slash membership. Jordan Westbrook on the first pitch. This is driven the other way, and Straw, the gold glover, settles under it. A couple of long outs. Deeper figures. Well, if I could do that again, I'll get into the fifth, maybe sixth inning.
Ramon Arias who tripled with a foul ball. They're still amazed with the way the wind's blowing that he was able to get it over Straw's head. The ball, I mean, really must have been hit. Short hop the wall and right center field. Owens had a good year getting on base, 331 on base percentage. The power has certainly dipped. Only four home runs this year. That was a ball that nearly left it. Nearly left the yard, hitting right off the very top of the fence. After 16 home runs a year ago, that number has gone down. Two one. Yeah, he, he, the master when he's on his game of just pitching a little bit out of the zone. And again, deception and where you pitch 90 right underneath the letters. And another one. Couple of hits already for Gunnar Henderson tonight. And Aria strokes one up the middle for his second hit. Well, that's the way to keep an inning alive and get Henderson to the plate. You can see just a little breaking ball, little curve ball, stays up. Ramon having a nice September came in. Now what? Triple single came in at 341 in the month of September. Six hits for the Orioles tonight. Arias with two. Henderson grounds one right behind him, and Gunner is retired for the first time. Orioles held off the board in the fourth. Dean Kramer will look to do the same to the Guardians. Club after being optioned at the end of July. That move was made today when Michael Bauman was sent down. He'll be in the Orioles' bullpen, but you can make a strong case he was the team's best starter in the first half of the season. But Brandon Hyde said today he just ran out of gas after the All-Star break. Now, the minor league numbers aren't great, but Tyler Wells said today his stuff has been good and he feels fresh. Kevin and Jim. Glad to be back. And again, if he's anything like he was first half or even, you know, the year he was drafted at uh, the Rule 5, he will help this club. I mean, Brandon Hyde said it before the game today. Tyler Wells was the major league whip leader for about yeah. two months and was the Orioles' best starting pitcher for the first two months until he faded and Kyle Bradish stepped forward. So Tyler Wells got up to about 96 in the bullpen in Triple A. Yeah, he was telling us he made a, a, a couple of uh, changes with his lower hip area that you know got him back on top of the ball. He was six eight, and when he pitched out of the bullpen, what at the 
2021. He was throwing 94 to 96. Oh, Naylor takes a change up wide. Three and one from Dean Kramer after one, two, three, third, but 71 pitches through three. Well, the count when you, when you have a two run lead and you're three and one, you have to give them a, a hittable pitch. And not able to do it. So they're looking for exactly what they got. Lead off walk. Most fans smile. It's Friday brought to you by Dominion National providing high value dental and vision benefits for individuals at teethkeepers.com. Enroll today and save. Smile. It's Friday. Got the wearable Maryland uh, Orioles flag, which is being used as some sort of a dancing instrument. Oh, it's the wearable cape, is it? Uh, no, that is the wearable flag, right? But it's being used as it's a, a cape. cape. Yeah. You can literally put your arms in the sleeves. It is literally a wearable flag. It's a fantastic yeah. article. So already this inning, he thought that pitch might be a strike. Didn't get the call. But last inning in sync, this inning totally again out of sync, just like the first two innings. Things flattening out, not being able to throw the pitch where you want. Miles Straw. And then a hanging, I don't know if it's a two seamer or BP fastball. Straw is a spectacular defensive player. Gold Glover a year ago, six assists, hasn't made an error in 148 games. His slugging percentage lower than his on base percentage, slugging 286. On base 289. He has been a really major disappointment for Cleveland hitting. And there is the aforementioned Tyler Wells already getting loose in the fourth. Straw flicks one out of play. We were just in Houston. We saw Yiner Diaz, <laughs> awesome young catcher for Houston. Big arm, major bat. Phil Maton's been an important part of their bullpen. That was a two for one deal two years ago. Straw to the Guardians. And again, defensively, not many that can match what he does, but the bat has just never been there. That's off the corner, three and two. Nailer the runner at first. He goes. This pitch is hit in the air to right field. And Santander stumbles oh, and lost no. it. Oh, boy. Wow. Santander's going to go back to get it. Straw into second. Nailer, who had to retreat, makes it to third. Well, that's twice he slipped. This is an out turned into a, well, it's an error, I imagine. But if not, either way, second and third. Hope he didn't hurt his ribs. Had to throw a strike, makes a nice pitch, and then right there it goes down. He was grabbing the left ribs. He's got his left hand on his left side. Which is the oblique in that area. No one is leaving the Orioles' dugout. And here is Stephen Kwan with runners at second and third. Nobody out on the top of the Guardians order up again. Yeah, Kwan line drive hitter. Not a lot of power, but high average with runners in scoring position. Infield back, so they will concede a run. It is officially an E9. Santander's first error of the year. Yeah, almost caught it. And you're right on. That's twice today. Yeah. Right in that same area in right field. Quan wow. takes one just out of the zone.
Stephen Kwan tied for fourth in the American League coming into the game and hits two more. He's got 168. Kramer needs a big out here. Oh, and, he and he got, got it. it. Yes. Backdoor cutter to freeze Kwan. And he doesn't strike out a lot, as, as you mentioned. You give up on it. Little cutter, you started off the corner, and you can see Hadley Rutschman, nice job of just holding it there for the home plate umpire. Second and third, one out now, Ramirez. Ramirez grounded out to first, struck out swinging. One of the game's biggest RBI producers. Yeah, we got to note today what 200 stolen bases, 200 home runs, only Trout, Altuve. Jam shot left center field. That's a base hit. Ramirez. It's going to score only one. Straw did not read it well at all. And he holds it third. So a one run single for Ramirez makes it five to four. Well, they can put the ball in play and then, I mean, just softly hit. I don't know what Straw's looking at, but got to know where the outfielders are and you can really run. But he, it does keep the double play in order. If he gets a good jump, no way he's out at home, right? He doesn't even have to have a good jump. Just read the ball and you'll, you'll, you'll coast it. Hicks did put up his glove for the partial deke, and it fully worked, I suppose. So now Naylor. Kramer's still out there. And ball one to Josh Naylor. A little flare to left in the first walk in the second. RBI leader on the team with 94. Naylor ground ball to oh, short and wow. eats up Henderson. Yeah. A run is in and Ramirez to third. Ramirez is going to hold there. This is just one of those good grief Charlie Brown kind of nights. It's 5-5. Well, hit sharply, but it's a ball that Gunner, you know, we've seen him make so many spectacular plays. So take a look. I mean, you think you're going to double up right here, a little cutter. But again, I think the bounce off the mound. You know, we saw it. it Frazier make a great play because the ball hit it. So again, instead of catching it, the ball goes off his glove, wrist, somewhere. And then they tie the game up 5-5. I mean, Kramer will have to leave. But not a great defensive inning for the O's here in the fourth at Cleveland. Uh, for Dean Kramer. 
you know, struggled early, settled down in the third this inning, a couple of errors, so he will leave the game. And now, uh, time for our MedStar health pitching change. Easy access to the same care the Orioles trusted. Visit uh, MedStarHealth.org to find care now. So frustrating night. Didn't have your best stuff. Tyler Wells, right out of AAA Norfolk, comes in, and those are the numbers. And as you mentioned, Kevin, pretty spectacular. Had a rough outing against, you know, you talked about three three outings. One of them was against the Yankees. Stanton and Judge hit home runs. Of course, Stanton's got over 400 home runs, and Judge broke the American League record. So, trying to get out of harm's way here in the fourth inning against Cole Calhoun. First pitch swinging, Calhoun into right. Santander, fair territory, makes the catch. Ramirez is going to jog in from third, and the Guardians have the lead on a sack fly by Calhoun. His second RBI of the game, and the pendulum swings back in favor of the Clevelanders, who lead 6 5. Yeah, a little cutter. Boy, it's great to be able to make an out and drive in a run. That's exactly what he does. He's looking for a ball to get in the air, and he does. RBI double and a sack fly for Calhoun. Ball one blocked nicely by Rutschman. Unless we forget Tyler Wells first 18 games was one of the best starting pitchers in the majors in terms of survive or uh, not allowing base runners really surviving solo homers 318 ERA he wore down in the next three a lot of walks the Orioles saw signs of fatigue ERA in the minors was 552 which they're only partly concerned about they thought the velocity was good in the minors as he got further and further into his outing. And Wells not always concerned with the statistics, more concerned with the pitch quality and how he felt bouncing back after outings. He pitched two days ago. He's here in the fourth inning in a one run game. And he blows a fastball at 93 past Jimenez. Yeah, he's able to because of his size. He's 6'8. Throws the ball downhill, very unique release point. And we saw him pitch, what, at 92, 93 all year long and until he got tired. Was as good as anybody. Lowest whip that's walks and hits per nine innings. And then he's in the right field. Been a busy night for Santander. Cleveland gets three runs in the inning. One hit, two errors. Guardians back in front. Cole Glover throws it into the runner. Ramirez tries to keep from getting hurt and then also fall on top of him. That didn't matter. Not the gunner gets up. Orioles would at least briefly take the lead, five to three. 
And Adley Rutschman will try to give the Orioles the lead back. They led 2-0, trailed 3-2, led 5-3, trailed 6-5. Cleveland's got a new catcher in David Fry. Bo Naylor out of the game after walking in the fourth inning and scoring on the Jose Ramirez single. Well, Rutschman, Santa, and Aaron O'Hearn. Bieber not much longer for this game in his return from some right forearm irritation and some right elbow inflammation. Pitch count was thought to be around 80. And that's low for ball three to Rutschman. Final line for Kramer, by the way, Jim, three in the third, seven hits, six runs, three earned. Walked two, struck out three after two errors in the fourth inning. Driven the other way by Rutschman. That ball is high. That ball is out toward the 19-foot wall, and that ball is not quite to it as Miles Straw makes the catch with his toes against the fence. Adley 0 4 3. Home to some of the best beaches in the world. Find your piece of paradise on Florida's Gulf Coast. Plan now at visitsarasota.com. Culture, restaurants, spring training, Sarasota. It's like a promo read after a promo read. Well, it's known for more than just the beaches, but that's right. The golf. Wonderful at Smith Stadium where the Orioles yep. play their spring training ball. Idyllic way to spend part of uh, March. It's a fastball by Santander, one and two. A couple of Orioles fans who'd love a fly ball in the outfield. A little souvenir in their lap. Not going to get it there. Strike no. three. Santander retired for the first time. Well, good breaking ball, good curve ball. And then, you know, it's 6 3. And the master when he's healthy of changing speeds. Ryan O'Hearn sees ball one. This is going to be the 80th pitch for Bieber right at or around his limit. There is still action in the Cleveland bullpen. O'Hearn swinging away bounces one to first Shane Bieber's going to get through five with a chance to win this game despite giving up five runs six five Cleveland.
game, Anthony Santander made a terrific catch on Gabriel Arias for today's Land Rover defensive play of the game presented by Defender. Yeah, it gets the Orioles off the field. Team Kramer. And then, of course, the uh, don't play too well in the fifth. Or actually the fourth, excuse me. And uh, the Guardians take advantage of it. It's a rough defensive inning. Two errors, three unearned runs. And Tyler Wells back out there for second relief outing of the year in the big leagues. Relieved Kyle Bradish. Remember that game at Texas where Bradish was hit on the foot in the second inning. Arias Brennan and Naylor here. D. Kramer's last four starts now, 17 in the third inning. So he's gone four and two thirds, four and one third, five innings, and now three and a third. Today, his third shortest start of the year. He's given up 13 runs in those 17 and a third, 10 earned. This ball flatly to Gunnar Henderson. Arias is 0 for 3. Those fans, you can vote Kyle Gibson for the 2023 Roberto Clemente Award presented by Capital One, which recognizes players who best represent the game through extraordinary character, sportsmanship, community involvement, philanthropy, and positive contributions both on and off the field. Vote today at MLBtogether.com slash Clemente21. Total team guy Kyle Gibson, who is due to start Sunday in the finale this series. So for Dean Kramer, Tim, the last four starts, again, he's averaging a little over four innings per start. And a number you always reference pitches per inning. He's at 21 pitches per inning in that span. Yeah, and he was right around, you know, in 15, which is where he was last year. Well, Brennan with a sky high fly to shortstop. Brennan and is worse for three. See, yeah, seeing Tyler Wells do what Tyler Wells can do when he's healthy. Which he's not going to he's not going to light up the radar gun. He did that a couple of years ago his first year when he was a rule five guy. Royals picked him up from the twins organization for a hundred thousand dollars. Had to keep him in the big leagues all year and he really pitched well. Came up with a change up came up with a little bit of a slider. Had a little bit more velocity than early this year but he's he's big he's tall throws strikes. Got the big overhand curveball so he's got four pitches. David Fry, who comes in for Bo Naylor. No word on why Naylor left for the top of the fifth inning, but Fry is in. 229 hitter, 308 on base, does have a little bit of power. He apparently hurt his hamstring and. Uh, has really struggled since he came back and there's your home run swing but straight up in the air. Home run in a silo. Fly out in the ballpark. Wells with a quick one two three fifth. Boy did they need that. DraftKings do up six Hayes and Heston. We'll look at the total runs live odds when we return. The DraftKings Sportsbook makes it easy to bet. Download the app and get your bets in now.
Odds for the over under total runs and right now there have been 11 runs in this game. Trap Kings is thinking there'll be more. The over under is at 14 and a half. Appreciate your enthusiasm, sir. We do have a promo to read here. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. New customers can bet five, get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Use promo code Diamond when you sign up. So more runs. Uh, those would be necessary for the Orioles to win this game. Cleveland's got six of them. The O's have five, and the Guardians turn to James Karinchak. Yeah, it's been up and down. Uh, you know, a little bit of problems with the new rules. Maybe a little bit more uh, trouble with the uh, pitch clock earlier in the year of their first violation opening day. Pretty good fastball, big, big overhand curveball. And there it is. Throws it almost 43% of the time. Shane Bieber out after five. Not terribly effective, but leaves with the lead. Three curveballs to start Aaron Hicks. Well, they got him to bounce into a double play back in the third, and that was huge. There's a fourth curveball, and that one looked really wow. good, but yeah, Nestor yeah. Seha said it was not a strike and yeah. no swing from Tom Hanahan. The ball was right down the middle. Hmm. Karachak, very few hits, tons of strikeouts, tons of walks. And that yeah. is strike two with his first fastball. And he's got a good fastball. Funky windup. And so you have a lot of deception. And key, of course, can he throw enough strikes? Orioles hope not. Here is the line for Shane Bieber. Five runs, four of which were earned. Did finish out strong with scoreless innings in the fourth and fifth. What do you make of his return? I, well, he's Shane, Shane Bieber. He knows how to pitch. Threw the ball away. Otherwise, it would have been a lot, lot better. Velocity has come down the last couple of years, as you mentioned. You know, with Cy Young Award year 2020, probably 93 to 94. Hicks taking his time out. But he's got to be pleased as long as he comes out of it and the elbow doesn't bother him. Four hooks, three heaters, eight pitch. Another fastball that's inside. Good take and a good plate appearance by Aaron Hicks for a leadoff walk. Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by PNC Bank, helping to make a difference. And by Drive Easy MD. Drive Easy MD helps you cruise a little easier with easy pass, pay by plate, and video tolling. Visit Drive Easy MD. Dot com. Hicks the second walk for the O's. And ball one with a high hook to Hayes. Ground out to second and a strikeout looking tonight for Austin. Well, if he wants to be wild, we saw what happens last night. Perez. CNL Perez for the Orioles had pitched what four out of five days. Hit Naylor, a walk, a bunch of walks, infield hits, loopers, bloopers. So maybe the Orioles can have a Indian inning, three runs in that bottom of the eighth inning to win it. Karachak, fifth year, Cleveland out of. Mighty Bryant University. Hayes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a like an unhittable curveball. And so the key, of course, can you throw it over? Drafted back in what 2017, ninth round, 282nd pick that year. The Bryant Bulldogs of Smithfield, Rhode Island. There goes Hicks, and he'll go back. Oh, the classic two and one you can start the runner got to throw a strike.
Karachek gets a ton of swings and misses outside the zone. He has been so good at getting swings and misses inside the zone too. Usually on that curveball. Yeah. It's 2 2 here. That ball is spiked and he runs the count full again. Well, on the curveball, they're hitting 120. Couple home runs. Fastball 80, 88 points higher, but still low at 208. Hicks running again. This pitch is hit in the air to short left field. Jose Ramirez foul territory for the first out. Get the Orioles official postseason T-shirt today at the Orioles team store as the O's prepare to take October. For store hours, visit Orioles.com slash team store. O's will be back home Tuesday, the final six games of the regular season, two with the Nats, four with the Red Sox. Well, very slow to the play. I mean, check out the high leg kick. Yeah, he'll throw over there. Almost throws it by by Naylor. That's looking into the glove just to see if it's still there. But he's not one of those slide steppers where you take that front leg and just slide it. Kerstad the other way. Quan is there. So two outs in the air after the leadoff walk. Kerstad's 0 for three. Jordan Westberg strike out and a long fly ball out. Hicks is going again. This throw is airmailed by Fry. And Aaron Hicks with an easy steal of second base. He's five for five in stolen bases as an Oriole. Well, just a great situation to run. Guy can't hold. He's very slow to the plate, probably 1.5 seconds. You want to be under 1.3. And then Fry does air mail the shortstop. He dropped his elbow, so that's going to elevate the ball. Jimenez can't catch it. Orioles 16th in the league in steals, but sixth in success rate, 83% into the game. And Hicks has a huge lead if he wants it. He'll back up at second. Strike one to Westbury. They're not playing anywhere close to Aaron Hicks in the middle infield. And if he wants to take third, he probably can. Yeah, the only guy holding him on is the umpire. But again, you have two outs. If you're a middle infielder, if he wants to steal third, fine. Just but you're thinking, let's just get an out, and otherwise the Orioles will tie the game up. Well, Tyler Wells has only thrown 13 pitches, but the Orioles have not one but two relievers up right now Shintaro Fujinami and Danny Kudo. They have both just recently started throwing. Yeah, even the hangers aren't hangers because of the spin rate from Karen Jack. So that Bo Naylor left this game with a right thumb contusion. That's why Fry is in the game behind the plate. And Fry blocks strike three, tags out Westberg. So Karachak works around a leadoff walk. Bat goes smash. We go to the bottom of the sixth.
Annapolis. Enjoy nearby wineries, breweries, and more this fall in Anne Arundel County. Create your fall adventure today at visitannapolis.org. And by Maryland Lottery. Come and get your fun. The Hope Memorial Bridge overlooking Cleveland, Ohio, home of the Guardians Progressive Field. Centaro Fujinami warming up. Danny Coulomb has sat down, and Tyler Wells is back out there. And yeah, you're on TV. Do we have a choice? <laughs> nice of them come to Cleveland. Well, so far we have really witnessed a very good performance by Tyler Wells, who's thrown 13 pitches to his first five batters. And kind of typical when he's healthy, what he does throws a lot of strikes, 6 8, very deceptive. And bossy up a little bit from when he st started. And then mixes up cutters, sliders, change ups. And then an occasional overhand curveball. Well, Straw singled in a run, reached on an error by Anthony Santander. And if Tyler Wells can get back to the reliever he was a couple of years ago, as Angel De Los Santos warms up, what a wonderful world this could be for Brandon Hyde. He's looking for right on right options. Two and two for Straw. Have a seat with a high fastball for strike three. Is that like grab some pine? Grab some straw? No. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> uh, That's going to be all for Tyler Wells after this strikeout. Yeah, high heater. Up and in. 94, probably like 98. Well, Tyler Wells looked great. Face six batters, retired them all. I'm sure he'd love to get more, but he will walk off the mound with a really nice return to the big leagues under his belt. Fuji coming in. And availability the white yesterday the darker the last three days and that was the state of the bullpen coming into today. Shintaro Fujinami has only thrown once in the last three days but four times out of six days for him. Fujinami will come on to face the top of the Cleveland lineup with one out nobody on in a one run game in the sixth. Yeah the control has been a little bit spotty when he does throw strikes because he throws anywhere from about 98 to 101. He's got a little bit of a cutter splitter. But lately uh, command has been a problem. And that's where you get the 43 walks in 76 in the third innings. 
So again, let's see how confident he is with his ability to throw the ball over the plate tonight. Hey, since we're here in Cleveland, Ohio, can I give a happy birthday wish? Of course. Our friend who just joined us a couple of weeks ago, Joan Jett, 65 years young today, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Joan Jett. Oh. One of the biggest Orioles fans out there, and one of the coolest Orioles fans out there. Happy birthday, Joan. And we hope we'll see you in the postseason. You missed us on Joan Jett, but I'm sure, know, I'm I was sure you've met her several years. times. Well, no, I, you met her this year. You were I down at the trap with in her. In Tampa. Yeah. No, you guys got to, you know, she, she was terrific. Well, I mean, you know, she's a great performer, but it was a great interview. Did you know yeah. she could throw a screwball? Joan Jett can do whatever she That's wants right. to do. She's Joan Jett. <laughs> So Fujinami against Kwan. And Brandon Hyde has said multiple times he likes having Fujinami face lefties. He's in here in a 6-5 game. And the Blue Jays have just taken a 5-2 lead on a solo home run in the ninth by Dalton Varsho. So if the Jays can hang on and win that game, then the magic number for the Orioles to win the American League East would drop to 6. And if they win tonight, he would drop to five. And that would be a lovely thing. Two and one. So two innings, a strikeout, 19 pitches, 12 strikes for Tyler Wells. And Quad Rockets won right to Ryan O'Hearn. Just the way we hoped it would turn out. But again, you get an idea. You know, Quan, a, a, a good hitter, smart hitter, so he looks three and one, gets a fast ball. Fuji gets a little bit lucky because it's hit right at O'Hearn. If it's to the right or the left, it's probably going to be a double with his speed. But it's an out. Jose Ramirez one for three RBI single. Yeah, really I mean hasn't had a devastating split. Never threw one so I don't know how hard it is to throw. ERA with the Orioles is an even five into the game for Fujinami. Now 27 and a third, 20 hits. And again, the walks have been the issue, 13 of those to 31 strikeouts. We saw him on Wednesday night throw 12 pitches, only two for strikes against three Astro batters. Ramirez off the end of the bat. Santander charging in and sliding to take away a hit. Well, the good news about that, number one, it's an out. Number two, it doesn't look like the oblique or ribs that he thought he might have hurt when he slipped. Orioles need some offense down by a run here in Cleveland.
Brought to you by PNC Bank, helping to make a difference. And right now at the Trop in St. Pete, Jays 5, Rays 2, top of the ninth. If the Blue Jays win, that magic number for the Orioles gets knocked down by one from seven to six, and it can go to as little as five if the Orioles can also win tonight. And we should mention in that Yankees-Diamondbacks game in the Bronx, Aaron Judge just hit his third home run of the game. New York leads that one over Arizona, seven to nothing. Coming up on O's Extra Post Game, presented by PNC, we'll break down this game here from Progressive Field, and we'll take a close look at the return of Tyler Wells, who pitched brilliantly tonight out of the Orioles' bullpen, two scoreless. Kevin? Yeah, the bullpen very good so far, Brett. Two and two-thirds scoreless total, and out of the Orioles will try to dent the Cleveland bullpen. Angel De Los Santos, Guardian's second-best reliever by ERA this year, with a strike on that slider, which is his signature pitch. Yeah, pretty good. Bottom drops out. He'll face Arias, Henderson, and Rutschman. James Karachak is scoreless six. The walk a strikeout, 20 pitches, 12 were strikes. This ball over to third, and Ramirez throws out Arias. Catch Orioles baseball anytime, anywhere on the Masset app. Watch games live, receive expert analysis and player stats all in the palm of your hand. Don't miss a pitch. Download the Masset app today. Another eventful night for Gunnar Henderson, who has scored two more runs. He's at 96 runs scored, the most on the team. He's got a single, an RBI double, and a ground out. Henderson continuing to add to a rookie of the year resume, a likely gold glove resume with a utility position, and he'll finish somewhere. In the MVP balloting, maybe not in the top few spots, but certainly he will draw some down ballot MVP votes. And maybe not that far down as the best player on the best team in the American League. Well, they can do so many things. I mean, Tom Hamilton has done radio forever here. He said, Well, can he play shortstop? I said, Can he play shortstop? Play anywhere. But they saw him last year when he was called to the big leagues. Made some great plays here. With the home run off of Tristan McKenzie, who's going to pitch on Sunday. Danny Colum getting loose. Power to all fields. Can steal bases. Got a 3 1 slider knocked into the ground. And it's, it's funny when, when the uh, I hope he's all right. But when the in, the Guardians came to Baltimore, the end of uh, May, won two out of three. Gunner was hitting 199 and struggling. One of those games he went two for four, and his fortunes changed. Trouble with the breaking ball that changed. This was the park where he made that extraordinary debut last year. Remember the double play he turned oh. to shortstop. He was a star from the moment he stepped on this field. Three and two from here. Maybe the helmet kept the helmet wouldn't stay on. <laughs> Thankfully they rectified that quickly. We were wondering if Gunner would ever be able to keep his hat on. Helmet was too big and it went flying off, I think, after the first two balls he put in play. He cracked a joke about it after saying, Imagine what's going to happen when I can actually see when I swing. Seventh pitch, De Los Santos. That's down and in, and Henderson is on for the third time. He draws the Orioles' third walk. College students, bring your O's to school with you with MLB.tv. When you attend a game, receive a free subscription. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Well, we know Henderson can run. He's got nine steals. He's only been caught twice. Not going here, but he will run on the swing. A base hit from Rutschman in the right field. Adley Rutschman's first hit of the game. The throw is airmailed to third and backed up by Ramirez. 
And the Orioles have their top two hitters on against De Los Santos. Well, when you get a guy that can run on first, and uh, you know, sometimes you lose your focus on what you're trying to do. The hitter, you're trying to slide step, get rid of it quickly, and then Adley looking for a base hit, figured that you know, I can't hit it out of here in left field. And even though he did double off the top of the wall, I'll just pull it, gets a good pitch to hit. Brennan does a nice job to keep him at second. Talking about Henderson. Anthony Santander knocks one out of play. So it's a four for eight series for Adley Rutschman. And Santander can tie or take the lead here for the O's. Had an RBI in the eighth inning yesterday when the Orioles were down 2 0, grounded in a run. Ryan O'Hearn followed him by doubling in a run, and O'Hearn is next in line. O2. Angel De Los Santos, the fifth year big leaguer. Parts of three seasons with the Phillies and struggled. Cameo of the Pirates and struggled. Very good these two years with the Guardians. That one nearly hit him in the belt buckle. Cleveland, the 10th best bullpen in the majors. 376 ERA for Tito's group. A 2 2 for Santander. Left side, and that ball floated out of play. Well, the amazing thing about De Los Santos is he, you know, he throws 95 and he's got a slider that. It was about 30% of the time. It's about 13 miles per hour, actually about 11 or 12 miles per hour slower. And they're only hitting, what, 105 on it? So you have a go to pitch. But doesn't use it to lefties that much. Left side, that ball squirrels through. Base hit Santander. Henderson's waved around. Quan's got a heck of an arm, but it's going to be too late. And the ball skips away from Fry. Rutschman to third. Oh. Santander to second. And safe there. <laughs> a run scoring base hit. A throw that bounces away from Fry. An advancement from the two runners on base. And the Orioles put themselves in a great position as they tie the game at six. And Ehler almost throws it away. I mean, he bounces it. Trying to get Santander, who has head up base running. So take a look right here. I mean, a good base running. You know, it's not coming. Here comes Henderson. Great speed. Head first slide. And there's Santander on the one, really the one hopper that Naylor throws. And you heard the yeah. Guardians are going to challenge this. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it looked like he, the glove got there first, but I don't think he tagged him. But what do you got to lose if you're Terry Francona? It's not like the old days. See, I mean, the glove goes down, and I don't know if he hit the hand. I mean, look at the umpire right there. So I, I know that they can go to New York and get another look. But it used to be, you know, it used to be you get the glove down, you're automatically out. No longer. Not with replays. Uh, unless there's a different angle than that. How do you overturn that call? Yeah. And there may be. There may be. No. It's a single and RBI, E7 to advance the runners. It'll be an A7 either way because Rutschman took third. Yeah, and it's a huge call because obviously, you know, 6 6 ball game, you got runners at second or third, or at least third. Do you want to have runners at third and second with only one out? Or two After out? review, the call on the field stands. The yeah. runner's safe. Cleveland yeah. loses its challenge. All right. That's a big one. Well, it's just great base running. You know, you force Naylor, and, and, and again, the, the ball bounced. 
And I believe this is Carl Willis coming out again. A little game planning on what they want to do. Orioles have their leading batter with runners in scoring position. Yeah, I mean, just this is inside out. This is almost like he's been watching the uh, Guardians hit, and I'll go, I'll do the same thing. And then right here, you watch it, the ball bounces away. Here comes Naylor. Watch this throw. So the ball bounces. If he makes a good throw, he's going to be out. But if you're Jimenez, you have to make sure it doesn't get into left center because it was headed for that. That is the third RBI hit of the game for Anthony Santander. He's now up to 89 RBIs. And he has tied his career high from a season ago. He's done so in 23 fewer plate appearances than he did last year. So just a little bit ahead of that pace. And Ryan O'Hearn's runners in scoring position numbers you just saw. Yep. Are part of the reason the Guardians <laughs> don't want any part of Ryan O'Hearn. An intentional walk will load the bases with one out and put the inning in the hands of Aaron Hicks. Yeah, and they're hoping that he'll do what they did back in the third off of Bieber, which is bounce into a double play. So now they'll play. I thought they were going to go back to double play. They're they're playing a little bit in double play position. First pitch change up. Hicks has now reached base all 15 starts since his return from the injured list. One and one. And why is such a tough out? And you know we always talked about it when he was playing for the Twins when he first came up, number one, number one draft choice, and then with the Yankees. He has a pretty good idea of swinging what he wants to till he gets the two strikes, especially in this situation. Right field down the line from Hicks. That ball is foul, foul the off net. the netting in the corner. A little out in front of that slider, which, as you mentioned, he doesn't throw that much to lefties. Well, he's looking for maybe what he does best, lowest batting average. Now, of course, he wants. Aaron wants to put the ball in play and De Los Santos wants to strike him out. Hicks on a one two puts it in play to second safe at second Santander and Jimenez is saying challenge but Cleveland just lost their challenge or Arias beg your pardon is saying challenge. Well there's your gold glove second baseman who leads all second basemen in defensive runs but good base running. You know one of the keys of running the bases make sure the line drives get through the infielder. So again you have to really watch your lead and Anthony able to get back. And Austin Hayes will be recalled to the dugout. Cedric Mullins is going to pinch hit for Hayes. The kind of bat you can bring off the bench to pinch hit for an all star starter here in the seventh. It'll be Mullins and De Los Santos with the bases loaded and two out. And Cedric fouls one right off the face mask of Nestor Seha. Cedric Mullins with the bases loaded has been superb. Two grand slams this season. And just from a handedness standpoint, lefties a much better option against De Los Santos. We've already seen four of them reach. Mullins behind 0 2. Yeah, pretty good change up to hit, but fouls it off. Oh, Cedric with the big home run on Monday night, three run home run. That's what you were talking about. I mean, dominates right handers. Two strike pitch. Mullins goes down swinging and the Orioles leave a golden opportunity out there. They strand the bases loaded but they do tie the game on Santander's third RBI.
Well, it They raise six to two the final, so that means that magic number for the Orioles is down to a mere six. And you look at the updated standings in the American League East, the Orioles two up over the Rays. Remember, the Orioles also have that tiebreaker, so essentially a three-game lead after tonight. There'll just be eight regular season games left for the Orioles. Now, the Orioles can knock off another game in that magic number. If the Orioles can beat Cleveland tonight, it would be just five. Kevin? Brett already a big step forward, and the Blue Jays will play the Rays five more times down the stretch. So that's a big result there. Now to the task on hand here in Cleveland, Danny Coulomb in a 6-6 tie. Yeah, he'd been really good. Uh, did get the uh, loss the other day in uh, Houston. Came in, I, would, I think he'd warmed up four times, a little blooping double, and then a, a, a single to, uh, by DeBond to right field. The Orioles lose that game 2-1, to one, but... Orioles would not be leading the American League East if it wasn't for him. Comes over from the Twins. Hit problems last year, so didn't probably made him expendable. And uh, he's really had a great year for the Orioles. Shintaro Fujinami faced two batters, retired them both. Eight pitches, four strikes. Cedric Mullins, who pinch hit for Austin Hayes, stays in the game at center and bumps Aaron Hicks to the corner and left. Part of the order against Coulomb, lefty, lefty, lefty. Naylor, Calhoun, Jimenez. Ball one to Josh. Six runs apiece, two errors apiece. It has been a sloppy game. Eight hits for the O's, seven hits for the Guardians. The Orioles have walked four times, Cleveland two. Brothers in scoring position, O's three for ten, Guardians four for ten. So it's been... Pretty much as even handed as can be so far. Yeah, Naylor hits lefties. Mm -hmm. Having a great year, 292 against left handers. That tells me, and we saw it the first time when he dumped a single into left field. It, you know, all the good lefties. Already right, except Ronaldo Lopez up in the seventh. Strike mm -hmm. from Kulo burned it by him on a sinker away and a big cut by Naylor two and two. Thought he was going to head for the dugout, <laughs> but not so lucky. Josh Naylor, for all of his immense power, does not strike out much at all. 66 times in 113 games. Another very good contact hitter who's in the top 10% in strikeout rate in the league. And he is really late in games. Ramirez, their best bat. But late in games, Naylor has been their best bat. 2 2, Danny. Bounced it. Yeah, it's always tough to pitch against guys that won't swing at balls, have home run power in a tie ball game in the seventh here. Big pitch. Naylor helped him out. Chased a cutter off the plate. Another 3 2 for Josh Naylor. And there will be another 3 2 for Josh Naylor. Magic number is at six for the Orioles. Hoping to take this game into the eighth inning at a tie. Hoping for another comeback win in a game they've trailed 3-2 and 6-5. And Coulomb hooks a sweeper inside. He walks Naylor on eight pitches. The third walk for Cleveland in the game and Naylor's second. Guardians have a pass on a right handed bats on the bench but they won't use any of them here they'll stick with Cole Calhoun who has driven in a couple of runs and Calhoun waves 
haphazardly at a cutter. Cole Calhoun against lefties this year, nine for 43 with a walk, 209. Does have three home runs though, so there is some power. Mm. Cole Calhoun's career OPS 46 points worse against lefties. That's outside. Just off the outside corner. Danny Coulomb in his 58th game of the year. High strike goes his way. If you had one minor league rehab appearance, that's 59. Last year, the Twins, between the majors and two minor league games, he threw in 12. Yeah, I mean, it's a big, big difference. Naylor's got a big lead at first, and he draws a disengagement. Yeah. He's a legitimate base stealing threat, Josh Naylor. 5'11", 250, but he's 10 out of 12. They really run the bases well, the Guardians. What, third in the American League in stolen bases, I believe? Mm. Now that's two disengagements now. So Naylor, who has the world's most Cheshire cat-looking grin, can extend his lead if he wants, and he probably wants to based on that smile. <laughs> Not going at a pitch that bounces away. Rutschman will throw it through to second base. He is safe. Henderson slaps the tag out again, and he's still safe. An amazing throw to make it even close. Rutschman looks into the Orioles' dugout, waits for Ward on a possible challenge here. And Brandon Hyde says play on. Yeah, and even a better tag. And then he sustains the tag and then tags him again. Watch him here. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold him. And then comes back and because he thinks that left foot might get off. Heads up base running. First wild pitch of the season thrown by Danny Kuno. And Calhoun fouls the cutter out of play. So now you know Calhoun with nobody out and potential go ahead run. Jorge Lopez throwing. He wants to get the runner to uh, third base or in. Another 3 2. Wow. Yeah. Oh, what a break that is. Kind of a. Uh... This breaking ball just kind of meanders its way up to home plate. Way out of the strike zone, and he gets the call. I'm not even sure it was on the plate either. Definitely high. So there's an out. That is an absolutely amazing break. Take it and run. Ball one to Jimenez. Well, one of those weird nights, four errors, two by both teams, a bunch of unearned runs. Jimenez 0 for 2 with a sack fly. And Jimenez to the right side. Diving play. Jordan Westberg, he couldn't pick the ball. Jimenez is safe at first. Well, certainly good range to get there. Ball hit sharply. We've seen him be so good. It's just one of those freakish nights. Kind of like the late innings yesterday when they came up with three runs. So ball hit hard. Goes over. If he catches it, he's going to throw him out. And he doesn't. And now Brandon Hyde is going to come out and go to the bullpen. It'll be Jorge Lopez for a back-to-back -back situation. 
The Orioles fourth reliever of the night. 6-6 six, six game. Come on back. In, uh, let's take a look at our Met star helping healthy health pitching change. I hope he's healthy tonight. So again, I mean power pitcher can throw a ground ball better down in the zone. He's been pitching up. That's why you have the numbers. Last year, one of those incredible years. Made the All Star game. Traded over to Minnesota. Struggled with the Twins early. Traded to Miami. Struggled with Miami. Orioles kind of took a flyer on him. And again, I mean, it's not about velocity, Kevin, as you know. It's a can you make a quality pitch? Can you throw the ground ball? Something he did so well last year. You know, you look back at uh, what 2022 all year long, four home runs this year, six, nine, 11, 12 of them. So strength is the two seam fastball. And when he throws the four seamer, it has been getting walloped over 400. And well, let's hope he can sink the ball, maybe get a double play, strikeout, capable of doing all those things. Ten games with the Orioles. The good news is an 11 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. The bad news four homers, seven runs, and nine and a third. Naylor at third, Jimenez at first. 6 6 game, one out in the seventh. The batter is Gabriel Arias. And Arias Ooh. is attacking a first pitch sinker. Well, but it didn't sink. It was belt high in the middle of the plate. And this is the uh, the guy that came in nine for 107. Now that was against lefties, righties, as you mentioned. He hits them a little bit better. Right handed fastballs. He punishes Arias over 330. 0 1. There's a breaking ball. Hit way up in the air. On the infield. Henderson there calling off for Rios. That's the second out and a big one for Jorge Lopez. Yeah, really gets fortunate. Hanging curveball and Marius takes a big swing and pops it up. Brandon Hyde's bullpen has somehow stitched together three and a third scoreless innings so far. Fourth reliever of the game. Lopez with a strike on Will Brennan. It was a night where they simply could not afford to have a short start and they had a short start. So far they've made it through. Wells with two innings. Fujinami two thirds of an inning. Coulomb a third of an inning. A hit and a walk and a strikeout. And now Lopez. Brennan ground ball foul 0 and 2. So two good curveballs. What are you going to do now? What would be in your mind? Well again if you watch the game first time up fastball away hit it to left field for a single last night they threw the ball by him. 
I will tell you right now I don't want to throw any I mean I want to throw something that starts in the strike zone and ends up as a, a ball. Strike the ball there's no reason with this count 0 and 2 you need to throw this young hitter a strike. One for three with a double for Brennan very free swinger and the pitch is just off the plate. I mean, good uh, average with runners in scoring position at 314. Two on two out. The one two. Fouled in the air. Jimenez was on the run. He'll retreat to first. Josh Naylor, the go ahead run down at third. Well, you got a guy that's got 30 steals over first base if you're Terry Francona. Of course, when you're holding them on, there's a bigger hole in the right field. Well, let's see if he runs again. He is going, and a pitch is hit right that way. Cleveland has reclaimed the lead. Jimenez to third base. The ball is nearly thrown away, but O'Hearn gets to it, and Jimenez stops at third. Will Brennan picks up a two strike RBI single with two outs, and Cleveland leads it seven to six. Well, take a look. That's two strike pitch. Change up. Speeds up the bat in the middle of the plate. Doesn't miss it. And Josh Naylor excited. He let it off with a walk. So two curveball strikes. Fastball just off the plate. Fastball fouled away. And then a changeup does in Jorge Lopez. David Fry. Strike one with another curveball. Well, last year it was about high velocity. It was about staying out of the middle of the plate. This year it's about high velocity staying in the middle of the plate. And that doesn't work in the big leagues. Brennan's going. Rutschman throws through. Brennan is safe. Dangerous play there with yeah. Jimenez at third, well, but Jimenez really stays run, at yeah. third. But when you do that, then again, you you figure you're not going to throw through. So Francona going, okay, if he throws through, maybe we'll score. Good throw, mm -hmm. but he stays. Trying to steal another run. If you get a base hit, it's going to be two runs. Baltimore's challenging the safe call oh. at second base. The Orioles are going to see if maybe the hand slipped off the bag. And when you get to the eighth inning, even if you lose your challenge, you can ask for a crew chief review. So two outs in the seventh is a good time to take the gamble. So does he come up off the bag? So he obviously is safe there. And it looks like he has both hands on the base. Oh, maybe right there. Maybe the left knee came off the base and the left hand. So he really did a nice job. Jordan Westberg of sustaining the tag. Maybe you will get win this challenge. We were talking with Austin Hayes the other day about feet first versus head first slides. And Austin said it feels like there are a lot more head first slides now because guys have been fearing that play they are fearing the pop off the base and the replay era and that's why you're seeing more head first slides because when you go in foot first there can be that fraction of separation between your foot and the bag when you pop up and that's why they wear the oven glove you know so they don't yeah. get hurt I mean it's much more dangerous and so we'll see if the foot first way costs Brennan here. Well it's, it's, it's it seems to me I mean because I come from an era where almost everybody went feet first but you get slapped in the face going head first or stepping on your hand or whatever the case may be.
This is a lengthy review. Well, Jorge Lopez is, taking a few warm-up pitches. Westbrook did such a good job of sustaining the tag, holding it on, 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 that maybe that left knee and hand came off. Just, that's all it has to do for a brief second. There have been some discussions within the Major League Competition Committee about changing the way this play is reviewed in the future if a play like this can be overturned. After review the ball in the field stands. Runner is safe. Baltimore loses count. And again, the thought of that is you don't want to eliminate the foot first slide. You don't want players to have excessive hand injuries because they're fearing just popping off for a, a fraction of a second. Anyway, it's in place for now, and Will Brennan still has a steal after a deliberate review. So it's second and third one out. The Guardians have scored a run in the seventh after the Orioles scored a run but left the bases loaded. 1 1 to David Fry. That ball up and in. Fry did go, according to Brian Onora. Fry on in relief of Bo Naylor who had a right thumb contusion and left the game in the fifth. Very good speed for Cleveland on a 2 2. Guardians one loss away from being eliminated in the American League Central. They would need to win every game the rest of the way of Minnesota lose. So this could be their last night alive as Fry takes one inside for ball three. Well, like you mentioned, uh, David Fry hurt his hamstring. He's what on a two for 31. Want to win this game? This is a guy you got to get out. Three and two. And Fry oh. fouls it off his foot. Pretty good breaking ball there. Pretty good ability to foul it off. Maybe get a better pitch to hit. Looks like off of Rutschman's yeah. shin guard just twisted the foot awkwardly. The eighth pitch. Is the last one struck him out on a slider. Lopez allows an inherited run gets it out strands two guardians by one after seven. for in-depth pre and post game coverage We're here on Masson where we have the best analysis interviews behind the scenes looks and more 
as the Orioles take October by storm. Don't miss a minute of O's extra postseason right here on Masson. The Orioles are headed to the postseason. Their magic number to clinch the American League East is down to six after Tampa Bay's loss, but they trail 7 6 to the Guardians. We'll bring in Ronaldo Lopez, unscored upon in his time with Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, he's got it incredibly, I and mean, he's always had great stuff. Fastball is close to 100. Really good breaking ball, low low batting averages across the board. I mean, you're hitting 185 on a four seamer and 244 in the slider. The changeup, he's got a good one. But he's basically fastball slider with low batting averages and usually keeps the ball in the ballpark. The rookie Heston Kerstad first to face him. 7 6 inning number 8. Kerstad is jammed and thrown out by Jimenez and the rookie DHO for 4. Yeah, you're going to see Heston is the. Mm -hmm. Did. Is that catcher interference? I guess. Oh, it maybe is. it is. Yeah. Kerstad is still at first. Well, he's taking his. And they're going to be a pinch runner. Jorge Mateo is going to come in. So Kerstad reaches. On catcher's interference against Fry. Yep, gets the back of the glove, and you can see the umpire immediately. Mr. Seha calls it right away. So catcher's interference against Fry on that long swing by Kerstad. And Adam Frazier is going to pinch hit for Jordan Westberg. Jorge Mateo pinch running. For Heston Kerstad. Mateo not going on ball one to Frazier. That is the third error of the game committed by the Guardians, the fifth error of the game in total. And there are the stolen base numbers for Mateo. One of the best in the American League. He is thrown back to first on the first disengagement. From Lopez. Yeah, Ramirez comes in at third to take away the uh, potential bunt. Makes it easier if you do hit a ball to left field to get it by him. Ball on a strike for Frazier, who's 0 for 4 yesterday. Mateo still not going. Adam Frazier only one for ten career against Ronaldo Lopez. The one was a home run. Part of the waiver wire sell off by the Angels. One of a few Angels who came here to Cleveland. One two. Well, you had Giolito, who's a starter, who has not pitched particularly well for him. You had Matt Moore, who was claimed on waivers by the Marlins the other day. Double waiver. Yeah, the lefty. And you look at Lopez, and you're going, boy, how do you give up on a guy like this with this arm? Another one, two. Frazier sees it all the way. Yeah, well, not a particularly good changeup. Adam Frazier has often saved his biggest swings for the biggest moments. He does not have one here. 98 riding away and the eighth strikeout for Cleveland pitching tonight. Well, Ronaldo, when he first came to the big leagues, came up with Washington, traded to the White Sox, and he was a starter. I go back 2018-19. I mean, he's starting over 30, 30 games. But he can throw it right by you. You just saw him do that. Rios one on one out. Right back to the screen on 99. Oriole bench is down to McKenna and McCann. Jorge Mateo has not attempted a steal yet. 
They steal her six for seven against Lopez this year. And he is pretty quick to the plate and he is pretty accurate to the plate right there. Well the slide step is where you don't really pick the front leg up you just kind of slide it or you. Quicken up the, the, the front leg. And of course when you have that kind of arm. You're able to do that. Ramon tripled off the wall in right center in the third, singled to center in the fourth, grounded out to third base in a seventh. One, two. Right side for Maria, sliding play Jimenez from his knees. That is an absolutely spectacular double play. On a night where Cleveland has had one defensive mistake after another, Andre Jimenez just made the play of the night. Well, again, I mean, he's got what, 20 defensive runs saved, won a gold glove. Well, here's what you're looking at. Terrific play. Gets him out of the inning. Johns Hopkins Children's Center a child's dream is as precious as their health and at the core of all we do forward for our children by Antwerp and Auto Group home of the 20 year 200,000 mile warranty and by Miss Utility contact 811 before you dig every day it's the law Kevin Jim and Brett Back with you in the eighth inning. Cleveland's got the lead 7 6. This game has turned on its axis several times. <laughs> 2 0 Orioles after the top of the first inning. Then the Guardians got three in the next two innings. Then the Orioles got three in the third. Then the Guardians got three in the fourth. They led it 6 to 5 into the seventh when the Orioles scored a run. Cleveland got another one to take the lead back. Adam Frazier stays in the game to play second with. Miles Straw batting against Jorge Lopez. So the O's are going to have to come back in a game where they trail after eight. They've done that three times to win this season. Two in the past couple of weeks. And they'll have the top of the order up in the ninth. So Jorge Lopez tries to keep it 7 6. Straw in a short left field. That's Hicks who makes the catch. News from Tampa Bay where the Rays are falling like flies. Brandon Lau according to Kevin Cash will be out four to six weeks with a fracture in an area of kneecaps. So that means he's likely done for the year. A right patella fracture. Jason Adam returning from an oblique strain left with more oblique discomfort and Randy Rosarena day to day. Jorge Lopez comes out. The Orioles will go to D.L. Hall for a second straight night. 7-6 game.
Ball will come in and threw the ball really well last night. In fact, thrown the ball nicely. And maybe every once in a while, he's talking to him today. You know, he threw a sweeper early in the year, got rid of that grip. So the slider's been a little bit better. You know, still capable of throwing it in the mid 90s to occasionally the upper 90s. And really puts him a lot. And the one number that really comes out is only five walks in 15 innings. This is going to be D.L. Hall's second back to back situation of the year. We showed you right off the top that the Orioles had been using a lot of relievers of late. They had been averaging more than five relievers a game the last five. And D.L. Hall is their fifth tonight. Don't blame Brandon Hyde for that. He is doing the best he can with a team that is getting too short of starts on the whole and is now playing its 15th consecutive day without an off day. Nobody in baseball is close to that, but that is the reality after the Orioles had a lot of off days earlier in the year. One and one for Stephen Kwan. You know, there's a good slider and a wave. This is the Orioles 21st game in the month of September in 22 days D.L. Hall has pitched in 11 of those 21 games Jacob Webb has pitched in 11 of those 21 games CNL Perez has pitched in 11 of those 21 games so is Jorge Lopez four pitchers that have thrown in more than half the games with only one day off as Quan grounds out to second two away. Yeah you go back to August what uh, four off days. July because you had the all star break so you have four but only one other one. June it's a month of off days one two three four five six. Now the schedule makers didn't do the Orioles any favors yeah, down I, the stretch. I, I kind of wondered about that you know for next year or for not only the Orioles for any team. It just seems like it's unfair. I mean you just why do you need six off days in. In the month of June. Bouncing ball to third tough backhand for Arias and he cannot pick it. Jose Ramirez is aboard at first. Could be another error. One of those nights. And it scored a base hit. Yeah. Okay. But it could have been. Well we just you know Ramon has been so good. The way he plays it I'm not sure he can play it any other way. Watch him try to come in and short hop. It. I mean it's such a reflex position. Hot corner, you don't have a whole lot of time. If you play back, he's going to beat it out. So you come in, try to short hop it. Couldn't do it. So a two for five night for Ramirez. And Ayler comes to the plate. I mean, he started. If I had a telestrator, I'd be circling that base on balls in the seventh inning. Brought in Danny Kodlum to, and he ended up walking him. Here, just use this highlighter and circle the monitor. Okay. See what happens. <laughs> Orioles will have Henderson, Rutschman, and Santander in the ninth. That was a swing in the estimation of Tom Hanahan. Nope. Mm. Key words in the estimation of <laughs> Tom Hanahan. That was a swing. Yes. Well, that was a well intentioned swing. All I can say is Josh Naylor's having one heck of a year. Closing in on 100 RBIs, even though he was hurt. Hitting over 300. Wearing out pitchers with runners in scoring position. Single a walk a sharply hit ball that was ruled an error he got an RBI on it a walk two runs scored so he has been all over the Cleveland rallies today. Naylor scored a run in the first inning when Cleveland got two. he walked to the second that was after Cleveland's run. He had the RBI in the middle of the three run rally in the fourth and he scored the run in the seventh so he's been involved in three of the four innings in where Cleveland 
on which Cleveland has scored a run. Three and two. We'll do it again. Boy, it sure feels like Cleveland's fouled off another 37 <laughs> plus pitches tonight, doesn't it? Well, their approach is that they don't try to overswing. I mean, Naylor will take some big swings, but after Quan singled in the first, he dumped a single in the left and two strike. And there's another one. Up the middle of base hit. Ramirez will run to third. And Josh Naylor is aboard safely for the fourth time of the game. Well, it's like a track meet when you play these guys. And they just pass the baton by making contact. And the other thing is, every time we come here, if we come here early in the year, which is not the case this year, they came to Baltimore at the end of May, they will tell you it is a very difficult place place to play in April and May because of the weather. You're right close to Lake Erie. Winds usually blowing. It's damp. It's cold. Better place to pitch than to hit. Now Terry Francona will send up a right handed pinch hitter for Calhoun. That's Ramon Laureano. Which will lead to a mound visit from Chris Holt. Hall has faced three batters, but really, what choice do you have here? Webb's throwing back to back days. He can't pitch. Flaherty, you'd rather save for a longer inning spot, which the Orioles have been needing. Cano, you could put in, but you probably no real need to do that at this point if you don't have to throw yeah. him. And I'm sure he just came out here to tell him that. Okay, think of something, get him out. We'll be down by one. We have a big ninth inning here in Cleveland. Now, Classe, there's Jack Flaherty, who will be available tomorrow. Classe is looming for Cleveland in the top of the ninth. Emmanuel Classe is very good. It's 42 saves, 297. All right. He has blown 11 saves, so he is not as untouchable as usual. He pitched yesterday. Put a couple on. If you're within one with the top of the lineup, you got a fighting chance, and it's Hall's goal to, as you said, think of something and give the Orioles a fighting chance. Well, in the old days, they come out and you go, hey, okay. Simple as that. Yeah, just figure it out. Got a strike there, one and two for Laureano. Gage fans here they boo all the calls it doesn't go their way. Ramon Laureano the longtime Oakland athletic. Yeah he had a pretty good war great defender. Groin and fractured hand this year so. Dale Hall threw in a back to back situation a couple of weeks ago in Anaheim. And the second night he got two outs but gave up a run trying to pick up a save in that game. Inning in a third yesterday. And Hall is two and two as Rutschman stabs the slider above the dirt. And the other thing for Laureano, I mean, if you're Terry Francona, I mean, he's hitting 284 against lefties. You could see him take that pitch. I mean, didn't even begin to start his swing. A lot of hitters would chase. Laureano lofts it into center field. Routine for Mullins. And this game will go to the ninth inning. It's going to be Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, and Anthony Santander against Emmanuel Classe. 7 6 game.
Roller coaster ride here from Cleveland, Ohio. A 7-6 lead for the Guardians. The Orioles trying to snap a two-game losing streak, trying to knock their magic number down to five for the AL East, and they will have to do it against the major league leader in saves and blown saves, Emmanuel Classe. Well, that's what you talked about, 42 saves, 50, 53 total opportunities. And again, you know, for a guy that throws close to 100, he's got a you know slider that's up there in the 98-mile-per-hour range. So typical, there's a hundred. That's a fastball, of course. What base hit last night? Walk, two strikeouts, through 29 pitches, which is a lot. So back-to-back -back nights that had five days off. Top of the Orioles' order to oppose him, and Gutter Henderson's in a 2-0 count. Henderson lined out to left against Classe last night. He has reached base three times and scored three times this evening. The 2-0. That ball is called a strike. Two and one. Not a pitch you want to swing at on a 2 0 count. 98 on the corner. Targets there again, and the pitch is up on the outside corner, but too hot for Henderson to handle. Classe among the best relievers in baseball the last three years. An ERA a combined 187. And he strikes out Henderson one down in the ninth. Yeah, when you throw 100, you can play catch with your catcher. Goes 2 and 0. Oh, makes a perfect pitch for strike one. Then you don't quite catch up. And then this is how you pitch. Lefties up in the zone. Most of them like the ball down, and, and that's where Henderson got his start last year. Home run, double on low pitches, so they stay out of that zone. A little different here. Usually, Adley, even though since the All Star break in the home run derby, to me, he's looks to me maybe a little more trying to get more loft in his swing. Would like the loft one out of here now. Otherwise, he'll take a walk. And there still has not been a home run for either team in this series. Again, Classe falls behind 2 0 and again pours in a hot strike. Rutschman, the Oriole on base leader. Has himself a 3 1 count. And the game tying home run in the eighth inning off Pete Fairbanks five days ago. And Rutschman with a big cut knocks one out of play 3 and 2. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Three and two. Rutschman fouls away a pitch that would have been ball four. Yeah, again, it, you have about four tenths of a second to decide, discern whether it's going to be a ball or a strike. And that, maybe it's a little bit less when you're throwing 100. The seventh pitch to Rutschman. That ball grounded to the right uh, side, Jimenez. Yeah. Insane play. Yeah. Well, that's it. He can play in. In, insane defense. You know, I mean, it's Robbie Malamar played here. Started in San Diego, got traded here, and I always said he looked like the Barishnikov of second baseman. Here's his understudy. There's Robbie in the Hall of Fame. It's a single. Double play he turned earlier was just incredible. Two down in the inning. Ball one to Santander. Well, the game plan is to go two and on everybody in this inning and then get him out. That's what he's done to the first two hitters. 
He won't do it here. That's his cutter at 89. Slider, whatever you want to call it. Anthony's three hits today have all driven in runs. That ball grounded just foul on a last minute slice. And the Orioles are down to their last remaining strike against the two time all star Emmanuel Classe. Yeah, the Guardians trying to do, I mean, they played 55 games that have been decided by one run, 25 and 30. Up and in. It had his arm. It I hit Santander. Yeah. Was there a swing? Tom Hanahan yeah. says no. So it's a hit by pitch of Santander. And the Orioles have a two out base runner. And that gets a hern to the plate. Little cutter right underneath his arm. That is the first batter Emmanuel Classe has hit this season. Yeah, there it is. That's hard slider and then does check his swing, I believe. And gets the, the bottom of his back arm. And McKenna's going to come in to run for him. So the Orioles add some speed for the tying run. And the go ahead run is Ryan O'Hearn. Two for eight lifetime off of Class A. That's way high. Ryan McKenna's first appearance since being called up from Triple A on Wednesday. Yeah, and he's, I, I, I cannot with O'Hearn at the plate. With a 2 0 count, it's not 1 and 1, it's 2 and 0. Oh. That he's going to try to steal and get thrown out. Not with this guy at the plate. Double power, home run power. Chase that pitch out of the zone. And they move back a little bit, straw, especially in center field. Try to cut off the gaps. O'Hearn has walked twice today, once intentionally. 20th pitch of the inning at 2 1. O'Hearn pops it up out of play left side and once more the Orioles go down to their final strike. Twenty two thousand plus ready for some post game fireworks in Cleveland the Orioles hoping to extend the wait. The two two. O'Hearn with a bouncing ball to the left side. Ramirez has no play. And Ryan O'Hearn keeps the game alive with an infield single, advancing Ryan McKenna to second. Yeah, it's amazing when you can put the ball in play. We've seen the Guardians do it all night long. Carl Willis. He will trek out to the mound for what, the third or fourth time? Their pitching coach said, Oh, here we go. Two strikes. The guy's throwing 100. Just bounce it. Ramirez, smart play because he knows why throw it away. So a two out, two strike hit by pitch. Only the third batter Emmanuel Classe has hit in his big league career out of, at that time, 936 batters faced. And then a two strike, two out infield single by O'Hearn to the mostly vacant left side. So now he's thrown 50 pitches the last two nights. 29 last night, 21. Aaron Hicks has a chance to do something special. Two on, two out the ninth. Hicks takes a slider for a strike. One for five with three strikeouts career against Classe. The 0 1. That one sneaks through the legs of the catcher Fry. McKenna goes to third as the tying run and the go ahead run. O'Hearn is down at second. Yeah, anytime a ball hits the dirt, but Fry should have caught this ball. Should have kept it in front of him. Hard slider, cutter, Terry Francona. 
He had hair when this game started. Been that kind of game. So he looks on. Right through his legs. The 1 1. A little dribbler, that's foul. And here we go again. <laughs> A third straight batter staring down match point. The Guardians' third wild pitch of the game has made it a little more interesting. A base hit gives the Orioles the lead. A strike ends the game. Hicks takes inside. And he does a Cano pose, hoping to get the inside corner. The 2 2. Bouncing ball to third. Oh. It's a fair ball. It got under Ramirez's glove. Are you kidding me? Aaron Hicks bounces one right under the glove of Ramirez. They're throwing water all over the place on the bench. It's eight to seven. An improbable comeback by the Orioles. Well, that's two in a row. Make contact. You're throwing 100. Play off the bag. You're playing uh, really positional baseball. And then right here, just check it out. You got to pitch up. And Ramirez, you know, re retrospectively would have liked to have knocked it down. So now Mullins with a chance. Cedric, you came in and struck out, pinch hit for Austin Hayes. So clutch, clutch hit, contact by Aaron Hicks. Orioles take the lead. A two run double and now Mullins into left center. Unbelievable and yet with this Orioles team entirely believable. Three outs from a win in Cleveland. rallies two strikes nobody on two outs of the ninth hit batter infield single chop double Aaron Hicks right now is the ultimate hero with a two run double to give the Orioles the lead against Emmanuel Classe with a win first of all the Orioles would eliminate Terry Francona's guardian so they're going to be eliminated in about 20 minutes anyway with the twins finish off a win more importantly with the win the Orioles dropped their magic number for the East down to five. They still need to get three outs which have been hard to come by in this park and they will turn to Ken Cano their sixth reliever of the game. Yeah again I mean he was the master with Batista before he hurt his elbow of uh, being able to come in and get holes. But doesn't give up a whole lot of runs ground ball pitcher fastball change up and occasional slider. Hasn't pitched since the 19th, so got some uh, time off. So well rested. Emmanuel Classe was oh so close 
on three occasions from ending the game. He gives up two hits, two earned runs, hits a batter. Glossy throws 57 pitches in two days. You certainly are not going to see him tomorrow. It's Cano against Jimenez, Arias, and Brennan. Five, six, seven. Get the leadoff guy out. And Jimenez takes ball one low. Yeah, and again, remember if he does get on, he's stolen 30 bases. The Oriole bullpen tonight has been spectacular. On a night where they once again had to do way more than they bargained for. Dean Kramer, three and a third, six runs, three were earned. Wells, Fujinami, Coulomb, Lopez, and Hall, four and two thirds scoreless. It hasn't always been perfect, but they've fought their way through. One and two, Cano with a swing and a miss against Jimenez. Yeah, the Orioles already, what, have come from behind 48 times to win? See if they can make it 49. They had one win this year when trailing after eight. As of September the 5th, this would be their third in two and a half weeks. Jimenez, right field. This game is a long way from over, folks. The new right fielder is Hicks. Jimenez is down to second. A leadoff double for one of the speediest players in the American League in the ninth. Well, I got a change up down and in and then just drop the head of the bat. Yeah, I mean, just down and in right where lefties like it. And then he's thinking triple if you misplay it. And he can run. One run in four and two thirds against the Oriole bullpen. But now Cano's in a world of trouble. Will Arias bunt? No, but that's as good as a bunt. Frazier with a cursory glance at third. Jimenez takes that base. There's one out in the ninth. Well, how many times have we seen both teams early, late, play the infield in? And that's what the Orioles are going to do here. Try to cut off the run at the plate. Bill Brennan got the big hit off of uh, Jorge Lopez back in the seventh line drive single. And here comes Chris Holt again. Got a change up with two strikes and single into, into right field. You could simply never turn off your television set or your laptop, your tablet, your phone. You can't turn your eyes away from this team, even when at times you may want to. Well, again, the injury to Felix Batista kind of unsettles the whole bullpen and you know, guys that used to pitch in the eighth are now pitching in the ninth, and that's Cano. And it's not that he can't pitch well enough. He's just not a strikeout guy. But he is a ground ball guy, and you have your infield in, so let's. And you got a young hitter who's hitting over 300 with runners in scoring position. You can see already single double. Pitch to Brennan in the dirt. That's a very smooth backhand by Rutschman. Last nine games coming in, Cano's allowed six runs, four earned, and seven and two thirds. Not a lot of strikeouts of late. In fact, with the two batters tonight, Cano has only struck out two of the last 33 he's faced. And we've seen teams just beat balls into the ground in these spots to get a run in. Now the Orioles are going to do something that you don't typically see. They are going to intentionally put the winning run on base. And they will do that in order to set up a double play against David Fry. And like we said, David Fry coming into this game, he, he took over for Bo Naylor, who apparently had what some kind of contusion on his thumb. Two for his last 30, so two for his last 32. Just trying to go with the odds. Hope he now you play the infield back. So if he just makes contact, unless it's a double play ball, they're going to tie this game. 
He made contact. Left center field. David Fry to the wall, off the wall. Game is tied. Ball is not fielded cleanly. Brennan is coming home. Guardians win. 9-8 Cleveland on a two-run double by Fry. A staggering, stupefying game of baseball belongs to the Cleveland Guardians with each team scoring two in the ninth. Well, people are going to second guess Brandon Hyde, but when your bullpen is not being effective, even though it was earlier in this game, sometimes you have to take a risk. And that's what he does. The leadoff double by to Jimenez really kind of sets up the inning for the Guardians. And then Fry, I mean, he's now, what, two for 32, make it three for 33, and he belts this ball. Mullins just thinks he's going to be able to catch it. He does, but then drops it. And again, Brennan will score all the way in the intentional walk. And there's your ninth run. Guardians win it by one. 26 and 30 now in one run games. And the pressure is now squarely on John Means' left shoulder tomorrow to give the Orioles any kind of length at all. Six more relievers tonight. The Orioles keep trying to get through this stretch of short starts and many relievers. Good news is the Rays lose. The magic number is six. The bad news is the Orioles cannot seal the deal. They fall 9-8 to Cleveland and nine. Boy, there's a lot to unpack, and uh, Brent Hollinger will try to unpack it all. Yeah, Kevin, David Fry, an unlikely hero who walks off the Orioles tonight, not even in the starting lineup. The good news is, as you said, that magic number still down to six after the Rays lost today. And we'll hear from Orioles skipper Brandon Hyde. It's all coming up on O's Extra Post Game, presented by PNC. We'll break it all down. Coming up.